lights. I drive for turns like this. I drive for the uphill battle. We understand why you drive. That's why Shell Helix fully synthetic motor oils are made from natural gas, designed for ultimate engine performance. Drive on. Shell Helix Ultra Fully Synthetic Engine Oil for the ultimate engine performance. Hey moms, Andy Manzana here. Did you know that you can give your child the best of nature from your trusted nutrition experts? New ProMill Organic, a certified organic formula milk expertly designed by Wyeth Nutrition. It is made of 100% organic milk with DHA, AA, selenium, and zinc. Together with a balanced diet, help nurture the gift with ProMill Organic. Make the right organic choice. I have. Available in leading drugstores and supermarkets nationwide. For kids age 3, Plus, ProMill Organic is not intended as a breast milk substitute. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up, sleepyhead. Wake up. 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 Wake up for a good morning and jumpstart your day right here. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Good times. You guys wake my ass up. Absolutely. Always a good time. Always a good morning. Hosted by highly opinionated jocks that'll help jolt your day. Trust us, good times wakes you up faster than the dreaded cold shower. Oh, God, no. The only morning show for people who don't give a damn about what they hear on the radio. Blah, 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 blah. Good times is Mo Twister live in LA. And Nico in the Philippines. I listen in the morning when I'm getting ready. Because it wakes you up. Every morning. It's awesome. In your ears. In your ear, weekdays, 6 to 9 a.m. Every morning. On Magic 89.9. Like and follow us everywhere on social media. At Magic 89 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Get the most complete radio experience, real time, online. Midday radio just got a little bigger. Just got a little bigger. Just got a little bigger. Not one, not two, but three DJs who are experts in getting their stupid on. Get CJ, Susie, and Ricky as they bring the fun, games, and excitement right smack in the middle of the day. The The Meal, Monday to Thursday, 12 noon to 3 p.m. On the station that gives you the most complete video experience. Magic 89.9. The Magic University brings you the Junior Jocks. The future of radio is here on The Magic. Take a look at what we've got to do to you today. Saving the world in real time. Today's Junior Jocks and tomorrow's radio stars live here. Junior Jocks on the air every Sunday from 6 to 10 a.m. With nothing but today's best music and a microphone. This is the Magic University with the Junior Jocks. This is their stepping stone to stardom. Listen to the new breed of DJs as they take over the airwaves Sunday morning. Oh, all crazy. This is the Magic University with the Junior Jocks. Here on Magic 89.9. Season 3. What? Season 3? Already? No way! Season 3 comes after Season 2? Yes, Season 3. Right after Season 2. Andy, Ricky, and Delamar are back with more topics, more prizes, and more babies? (laughs) Catch them on The Mother Show Season 3, Fridays 9 a.m. to 12 noon, here on Magic 89.9, Magic Nationwide, and on social media at The Mother Show PH. Talking to moms, I'd like to follow the mother show on Magic 89.9. 9:10 is the time. Happy Friday, everybody! Hi, everybody! Hello. Welcome to Hola. the mother show. There Hello. she is. Hello. Okay, somebody wants to say hi. Say hi. Hi. What's your name? I love you. Oh, <laughs> you love me. I, I I heard I love I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> So Sovereign it's cute. Four kids, right? I mean, four ladies, right? Four now. ladies. Four ladies. Four ladies. Olivia's joining us today. Welcome to the Mother Show. My name is Ricky. Hi, Mandy. This is Delamar. Yeah. And yes, that's right. You're Olivia. She's going to be um, one of four special guests today. <laughs> I swear, today is super it's, packed. It's a jam packed show, and we like, hope. I wish that you time would be like. I know. I know. <laughs> We should extend oh, to like 2 p.m. at talaga, least. Talaga. Talaga. Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, what? Station guy texted. Sure, Andy. Oh, my gosh. Sure. Take it all the way till 12 midnight. <laughs> 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 it's 9 11. Um, but yeah, we're, we're not joking. We have a jam packed show. And hopefully, you be part of the conversation. Uh, we'll tell you what we're talking about in a bit. But please reach out. You can call us up at 6310 899. Yes, and you can also message us via Facebook. We're live on Facebook. 
Facebook, by the way. So yes, say hi are. to us. It's the Mother Show PH. We're also live on Magic 89.9's um, Facebook account. Mm, nice. Also, you know, you can tell all your friends all around the Philippines yes. that they can tune in, listen, and watch live through www.magic899.fm. And in Cebu, we are Magic 92.3. In Davao, we are Magic 89.1. In Bacolod, we are Magic 106.3. In Cagayan de Oro, we are Magic 89.3. And finally, in General Santos, Jessa. we are Magic 106.3. Saying hi and good morning real quick to uh, Ino Campo. Hey. Right off the bat. Hi. Says, hey, so excited na ako sa guest today. <laughs> No, Our question is which one? Which one? Yeah. Which one? We have a lot. Oh, oh, <laughs> you know? Saying hi also to Chinky Agregado who's hey, listening. Chinks. Hello. I miss you, Chinky. Yeah. Hot mama ni Chinky, no? I know, and she's the best like wedding or party planner. We should out ask there. her how she does it. We should have her on the show. How we do should. you do it? How yeah. do you be such a fantastic, like a multitasker? Yeah. Diba? Classic multitasker. Are you Hi, guys? Chinks. Are you guys multitaskers? I'd like to think I am. I think you kind of learn You're to be as a yeah. mother. Yeah. But like prior to that, were you guys? Uh, well, of course, like on the radio, this is yeah. multitasking. Yeah. Because you're yeah. thinking. In case you're new to radio, <laughs> you know, Ricky is uh, choosing the songs, making sure, you know, yeah. the commercials are played at the right time. She's taking our cue, mm -hmm. you know, with a mic and everything. So yeah. it is kind of multitasking. But some people are just crazy good at it in real life. I, I can't do it. Have you ever... Minimal, you know. Have you ever found yourself planning dinner while you're, let's say... Oh, know, yes. Yeah, I'm talking to a client yes. at a meeting. Yes, yeah, like trying to correspond mm -hmm. with people, with clients while you're doing, you're cooking dinner yeah. or lunch, mm -hmm. and one of your children, or maybe more than one of your yeah. children, are asking for attention, getting into the kitchen. Because yeah. when they eat, they cannot be around the oven. Yeah, yeah. it's so scary. dangerous, yeah. right? So. But then they like to grab your leg when you're cooking. Uh -huh. And like, and make the fun sit. Like, it's so hard to say no to that. Yeah. But, you know, that's a dangerous place. Yeah. So, yes, multitasking. Me, sometimes yeah. I feel like I'm a sloppy one. Like, you like, brought your child to work today. You're an excellent multitasker. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? Like, you're doing just, you're, you're not just doing two things. Maybe yeah. you're like doing five things. Like, yeah. you do this, and then later Same on, time. you forget about it. Yeah. And then you, you, you try to multitask, and then you forget about one thing again, and then you yeah. don't continue. So, parang, yes. ang gulo sometimes. Yeah. What I, what I find funny is in your homes, is it the same? Like everyone asks you where things are? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to know. Yeah, I mean, like, even if you have help at home, you yeah. have to know still. Yeah. And, and you know, my, my husband would ask me things like, where's my cap? I'm like, aren't you in charge of your own no. cap? <laughs> but, yeah. But then I find myself saying where, where it, it is. is. You know, just to get it out of the yeah. way. Because the problem is... Eh? Even your husband's yeah. stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, me, I have to know. Yeah. This is which, the worst. Mga, which stuff? What though? do you want for dinner? Oh, my god. Or what gosh. do you want to eat? Oh. Oh, wow. <laughs> Where <laughs> do you want to go? <laughs> what do you want to do? What do you want to do <gasps> for the weekend? Like, when they ask you, hey, what do you want to do? Like, really? <laughs> I just want to rest. <laughs> Can I have a glass of wine in the balcony okay, while you guys plan. leave me alone? <laughs> or you know what's nice? Maybe, like husbands out there, maybe you should have things planned already. Like for the weekend. You should. Maybe that's, right? maybe that's your job. Like yeah. you do everything else. That's yeah. your job. Or like, you know, honey, like like for, like this weekend, um, GP planned it. He goes like, okay, we're going to do a staycation, not at home. So you can like just relax Chill. and enjoy. Uh, and I was like, yes. okay, great. But at the back of my head, okay, I'm packing. Uh, There's no oh, yeah, yeah, this weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. You know? that staycation has you working then. Yeah. yeah. When everyone asks me, hey, how was vacation? I'm like, what for vacation? When the family is on vacation. <laughs> yeah. The mama is working the hardest because mm -hmm. she's not on vacation. Yeah. She's no. you know doing everything. Yeah, but it's worth it. It's worth it. It, yeah, is. it is. It's so fun. It's oh. fun, you know. We, we, we like to say it. We like to complain. Yeah. Better my guilt, not Why do we want just somebody to say you did a good job? Yeah. You know? yeah. At the back of your mind, you're like, good morning, mom. It's super mom. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Hi. Someone's there. Hi. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Who's this? Yes. <laughs> Can you turn down your radio? Hi. Hi. Yeah. Come on. Okay. Hello? It's choppy. Maybe Did you can turn him? it down. Oh, oh no. We lost him. We lost him. Oh, no. 
But anyway, um, uh, that's how you can get in touch with us. Uh, you can do it. He did. 6310899, just in case it's 916. Once again, welcome to it. We have a packed show all the way until 12 noon. It's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's going to be crazy today. It's going to be nuts. Yeah. Say hi to Jackie Go, who's listening. Jackie. Hi, Jackie. Yeah. Yeah. I saw her. I saw her um, at the launch of one of the bakeries in BTC. Uh-huh. Yeah. She looks so good. She and does. Like, does. Whether it's online yeah. or in, in real life, you're like always like starstruck. And good ng tanya, di ba? Yes, it's I like love it. the whole year round. I know. Sobrang. Is Hi, it, Jackie. Is it a tan? I don't know. Or maybe it's her color. Ang saya. If that's your natural color. Hi, oh, my gosh. Super nice. Beautiful mama. And Look there's another mama outside. She's here, here already. She's here. I know. Our, one of our three guests. <laughs> one of our three guests. Actually, two of our guests today okay. are already here. Let's let's tell the listeners about our first guest. Okay. Um, so our first guest uh-huh. is a a non Filipina. Yeah, she's not. A not Filipina. she's not a Filipina. <laughs> I mean, biologically. Filipino. Filipino. Yeah. Not. <laughs> <laughs> but oh she's been gosh. in the country since 2009. Uh huh. She was a native Californian. Is that right? Okay. But she had um, lived for some time in Seattle, okay. Washington. Is mm-hmm. that right? Okay. She's she's saying yeah, yes. 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 <laughs> yes she's and, agreeing. You know, she married a man who brought her here to oh, the Philippines. Yeah. Uh-huh. She has three little boys. And they are all. She says all the life they know is the Philippine life. Yeah. So she's here to talk about her experience because I think uh, she's so wowed by the Philippines, yeah. and we were just so happy that she's wowed by it because there's a lot to complain about yeah, when you come is. from a first world country to the Philippines. Remember, just last week we were Actually. just talking about how we wanted all to move, <laughs> right? Yeah. And here she is wanting to stay. Yeah. Yeah. This is a good way to put it. And, and she's great. found joy in yeah. where she is. No matter, you know, and she's been exploring the Philippines mm-hmm. and Filipino and life. enjoying the food and the products. And everything. the language. Yes. Because I met her. She was at the her seminar. Her kids, man. Yeah. We were at the same seminar and somebody had brought up a, a word that we use all the time. Uh-huh. Like plastic. Mm. And she said, what does that mean? And, uh, and we had to explain to her. And she's like, oh, that's what they mean. And she's very interested about, you know, the way of life mm-hmm. here. Yeah. So she's been here almost 10 years. We're going to talk to her about her experience. Yes. Mm. So just in case you, you know, you're looking for another reason to fall in love with your culture or, you know, to see fall it back through the in eyes. Love. Yes. Uh-huh. Maybe see it through the eyes of another person. You know, uh, we're going to talk to our very special guest uh, in just a couple of minutes. But first, this is the Mother Show. We're bound for a break. More of it right here on Magic 89.9. We've got that Mommy Magic. The Mother Show on Magic 89.9. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up, sleepyhead. Wake up. 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 Wake up to a good morning and jumpstart your day right here. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Good times. You guys wake my ass up, Salute. Always a good time. Always a good morning. Hosted by highly opinionated Joss that'll help jolt your day. Trust us. Good times wakes you up faster than the dreaded cold shower. God, no. The only morning show for people who don't give a damn about what they hear on the radio. Blah, blah, blah. Good times is Mo Twister live in LA. And Nico in the Philippines. I listen in the morning when I'm getting ready. Because it wakes you up. Every morning. It's awesome. In your ears. In your ear. In your ear. Weekdays, 6 to 9 a.m. Every morning. Magic 89.9. Ang bagong entablado ng musigerong Pinoy. Tugtugang sarili ng atin Yung hindi sa kanila 
performances mula sa mga paborito, medyo paborito, at hindi paborito. Huh? Ano daw? Ang show para sa mga don't English me. Ay, panic! Okay, sure bro. Pasaway ka, ha? Studio 899, Saturdays, 4 to 6 p.m. Dito lang sa Magic 89.9. We've got that Mommy Magic, the Mother Show on Magic 89.9. It is 9.25. Um, welcome back to The Mother Show. My name is Ricky. My name is Andy. And I'm Delamar. Yes, you are. <laughs> I forgot yourself for, oh. for a second. Um, we have you all the way until 12 noon. Again, it's an action-packed show. We have three guests with us. The first one is already here. But before we introduce her properly to the show, we want to encourage you to call us up if you have any questions. Um, anything you'd like to say, feel free to do so. It's 631-0899. Yes. And, of course, we are heard uh, nationwide. Mm-hmm. And you can listen and watch live through www.magic899.fm. And in Cebu, if you have friends there, please tell them it's Magic 92.3. In Davao, it's Magic 89.1. In Bacolod, it's Magic 106.3. In Cagayan de Oro, it's mm-hmm. Magic 89.3. Yep. And in General Santos, it's Magic 106.3. And you know, we're social media freaks on the show. So <laughs> Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, oh, wherever right. it is, you just have to find us. It's at the Mother Show. Okay. I'm so excited for this. It's going to be an enriching morning, ladies. I already know it. It's going to be like. We're going to learn so much from all the mamas on the show. Okay. Um, And the thing is, there's like, it's like different um, aspects in life, right? Like, it's going to be. You're, if you're listening to the entire show, you're going to be well-rounded mm-hmm. in like three hours. Right. Yeah. It's going to be worth it. And if you guys, by the way, a lot of people have been asking like our past episodes. Yeah. It's on YouTube, right? That's right. So That's right. It yeah. is. All of our episodes are on YouTube. You can find the link on our Facebook See, page. I really want to do that swipe up on my stories. Yeah. I feel like you know what you can. Up. I know. I know. Ricky told me how to do it. And I'm like, I'm such a techno idiot. I really am. No. Yeah. I You'll only, get there. I only know little Parts of it's my age showing. <laughs> no, it's so easy. We'll teach you. Okay, oh my God. you're with millennials. Nux. I am. Speak <laughs> for yourself. Speak for yourself, huh? Hi. You okay. are a millennial. Yeah. No. Yes, you yes, are, dude. Ricky, you're younger than me. You my goodness. How can you not be a millennial? Do you know in that denial. millennials have a subgroup within the millennial umbrella that hates the millennial identity? I think that's that's you. Not you. the one hate. Hate But you is just, a strong word. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to conform. <laughs> ah. Should we say like we're the older millennials? Yeah. yeah. That's true. 35, yeah. I think. Does that right make now? me a mega millennial then? If I'm like, ew, no. Mega don't associate millennial. me with them. <laughs> You're a hipster millennial. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, okay. May tumatawag kanina, hindi ko kung bakit. But call us up again later on. 6310899. Okay, our first guest. Okay. So, um, you know, you can catch her on Instagram. She's pretty... Actually, she's very active on social media. And you can check out uh, her website, www.amomabroad.com. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> as I said, she is a California native. Yes. Spent her university years in Hawaii, where she met her husband. She spent a few years in Seattle and then relocated in 2009 to the Philippines mm-hmm. for her husband's job in the BPO industry. They have three boys, ages six, Four and two. Oh, oh wow. Perfect. Wow. And their <laughs> voice. <laughs> and she lovingly refers to them as the three Pinoy boys as life in the Philippines is all they know. So you can read all this in her website, www.amomabroad.com. Hey. Ah, please welcome to the show, A Mom Abroad. A Mom Abroad. I don't even know. This is my first time being on. Look at you. You're so cute. So 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 <laughs> Right? So cute. <laughs> Super. Yeah. Hi. She's done TV. Thank She's done that. No. <laughs> But we've got a first timer on the radio. Yeah. Yes. What are your tips? So this Do is not ever- curse. <laughs> no. Yes. I'll curse. lock it up. Yeah. And also there's there's small ears listening. Yeah, small so, ears. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, Amber. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm so happy to be here. And we're happy to have you. And we have so many questions, by the way. Oh, good. It's just such an interesting notion that you know you have a foreigner who wants to stay in the Philippines who's actually yes. planted some roots in the Philippines I love that you said that because that's how I feel ah super okay <laughs> so tell us about how that came about 
So as Del said, we moved here in 2009, and in the beginning, I thought it was just temporary. Because okay. most uh, foreigners who do like an expat post, mm-hmm. it's maybe just like a two to three year contract. Sure. They're kind of more like an extended tourist, yeah. stopping in, yeah. and moving along. And that's how my mindset was. Um, my husband got into graduate school, so I, I got pregnant here with my first baby. Okay. So I've only ever been pregnant in the Philippines. <laughs> ever. That's the only... <laughs> yeah. Mate in the Philippines. Yes, they tr- truly, truly. I've had the same OB my entire... Because my entire, when I first moved here, I was only 24. Wow. Yeah, nice. baby. I'd only so been married for two years. Okay. Now it's oh, wow. almost 12. So... Aww. Um, we went back for him to finish graduate school, and then we moved back to Manila with a baby, and I was pregnant again. So I knew what life was like. I knew I was getting into, and then about a few, two years into that, I still was just on this like bypass mentality. Like we're just gonna, we're just here for a contract, and, and then you. yeah. <laughs> and then my husband came to me, and he's like, "We're so we're not moving. I'd, I'd like to stay here and pursue this career option." And I like. Okay. Yeah. Then I need to flip a switch and love it here. And so I feel like I actually, every day I challenged myself to find something that I loved, um, something new to learn. And it really was, I had to shift my perspective. And then from there, um, and I feel so fortunate and special to have done that in the Philippines because I feel whatever you invest or give out, you get back tenfold, mm. hands down. That's the love you put out, the positivity you put out, you will get back a high investment on return. And so it was easy to love. Wow. Aren't I so happy? I know. <laughs> I'm so happy that somebody loves the Philippines like because this way. Because know how right? difficult it is it to is. live here yeah. when Especially traffic. Especially if you come from the United States. Especially yeah. Manila, I mean. I know, and the funny thing is I actually yeah. like super love Manila. When, we, when I know. <laughs> I know, and I didn't understand why people didn't, like when, when Filipinos lived here and they're like, oh, Manila, I'm sorry you live there. And I'm like, I'm not, I love it. <laughs> and then finally, when I went out to the province and had like a taste yeah. of like the province life, I was then like, you, oh, that, that, I get it. Well, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, 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 I understand now where yeah. before I didn't. But yeah. now the funny thing is when we, when we go home during home, I call it both of our places home. When we go visit my mom in the U.S., after about a week, I start to get like, Okay. When, are we, when are we going back? To like I'm ready to go back. Like, <laughs> okay. Like, I, okay. I need rice. Yeah. yeah, I'm ready. That was one I fill up on my Filipino breakfast yeah. before we go before we go so to the U.S. because I know I'm gonna miss it. Uh-huh. I bring a box of espasol for my yeah. mom for pasalubong. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. that's hardcore, man. It was. I have, you know. And I have a friend who hooks me up. She has it delivered from Lukban. Okay. I pick it up on from the on the way to the airport and okay. bring it to my you mom. You have to hook me up. I will. It's the I, best. I love espasol. Oh. Oh my God. Really? I was okay. in Tagaytay the, the weekend, and uh-huh. I was like, "We, I have to get my espasol. Yes, I cannot leave Tagaytay without, without it. Yeah. Okay, you need to try the one from Luke Ban. Okay, it's yeah. it's it's amazing. I'll have my dealer. My <laughs> dealer. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, how mothers talk. You know? <laughs> Our you know? dealers are very I different, know, right? <laughs> yes. Right? Yes. Super. So I met you in 2015. Yes. So if your child is two, yes, you I had just given birth. I had so. My kids now, when I had first written my, I need to update my blog. Mm-hmm. My eldest is actually turning eight. So right now I'll have an eight, six, and four. four. Oh, so okay. I had, he was just about a year old. Right. My, my boon so, so how, <laughs> my boon so cute. <laughs> so, so how I met Amber was <laughs> it, at my brother-in-law's wedding reception so random okay. okay we were it was so, so ra- <laughs> so random <laughs> so she is friends with my sister-in-law okay. carol okay. whom i've greeted on the show oh yeah so and then at the reception uh, we were seated in front of each other i had just given birth to parker okay okay uh, you yeah, got parker. good girl <laughs> Wow. I had just given birth to Parker at okay. the time and she sat in front of me and I remember we had a very short conversation and uh but it's like it's got gained momentum from that time super to today what you've already seen where you've been your yes. takeaways from the culture I was just in like the first 6 months cuz I really feel that when I finally could assimilate okay that's a word I love to to use mm-hmm. assimilate is when you really plant your roots Mm -hmm. it's where you really dig into life and you and you and you create a life here and I when I started Instagram I so I had flipped the switch okay I'm gonna love it here and then I found that when foreigners moved here 
they didn't. And I was like, I want to help them. I want to help them do that. So I started an Instagram account to do that and to show my family what our life was like here. Mm -hmm. Uh Um, And then it it kept going. And then I found that Filipinos actually appreciated my perspective, which I did not see coming at all. Like I had no idea. But that was in that first six months when I had just started my Instagram and started to really assimilate and live life in the Philippines. And Mm -hmm. so I actually find I'm an advocate of social media. Mm -hmm. I think that um, depending on how you... Yeah. Yeah. I I think that the way you use it, the way the person uses it is really the tool that will determine if it's going to be positive or negative. And for for me, it ended up being really positive. Mm -hmm. And it was because of Instagram that I got a barcada and became acquainted with my... I had barcada, (laughs) kaibigan, ate, kapatid. Like, it was like, as soon as... So I actually owe so much of my gratitude and happiness to social media, Mm -hmm. as ironic as that is. But without Instagram and without how utilized social media is in Manila... I don't think I would have flourished and assimilated as well as I did. I, I think it's 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 what it's the concept that you were referring to earlier that whatever positive thing you put out there, you get it back tenfold. Totally, so yeah. it's exactly like Instagram. Whatever it is you post yes. that you get genuine feedback from, totally, then that's what makes you want to do it some more. Exactly, or how you going. use it, how you engage yeah. with it, whatever. Right. Yes, well, I'm agree. just more surprised because oh, okay, so most of my friends in the last eight years mm-hmm. have been expats who have yeah. been here because of the job yes. in the BPO industry. And the truth of the matter is a lot of them do not assimilate. No. They can no. live here for yes. years yeah. and years. Uh-huh, that's I true. have like yeah. a little soapbox that I need to, I don't want to be offensive, but I have lots of theories about this. One of <coughs> my husband is one of them. <laughs> Tyler has been here since he was 18, fresh out of college. 18? No way. Oh, He's wow. 33 now. Yeah. And so... He's ne- he doesn't really know Tagalog. He doesn't really eat so many. I was just going to say, does he eat any type adobo. of... Adobo. Adobo he loves. Chicken tocino he loves. But see, where the difference lies right now mm-hmm. is that you have fully assimilated. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas yeah. my friends have lived here for longer than you. But they just... There's like no connection. Yeah. There's connection, but it's yes. as if you Americanized... Uh, the, yeah. their, their, so they their version out, of like yes. the yeah. or yeah. that is the connection because it is familiar uh-huh. oh I like I like going to Buffalo Wild Wings in Manila because that's like the food that I had yeah. in the US yeah. my These brother-in-law things. goes there all the time <laughs> <laughs> my, shout out to you my, my, yes and so that's uh, that is part of the reason I so one of the things I say I don't want people to just um, survive in Manila I want them to thrive mm. that's one of the things nice, I talk yeah. about on my blog is because and I <laughs> sounds so terrible but I at one point I wanted to create a hashtag life beyond Makati because when I tell <laughs> other expats yeah, yeah that I or BGC, BGC um that I that I live in Pasig they're like uh, where's that? And I'm like, girl, I am 10 minutes away from you. Don't act like yeah. I am in the boondock. Like, I am 10 minutes away from you. I am not far. Right. It's as if that's the only life they know. Well, and that's the thing. I'm like, well, I'm far from what? Mm. Oh, you? Mm. Oh, mm-hmm. that's right. And so I want, I, I often write in my blog, get out of Makati, go to the north, Quezon City. Go, although there is a big group down in the south now. Mm, However, yeah, it's true. Yeah, so I do want to say like there, there's life beyond Makati. There's <laughs> yeah. life beyond BGC. And you, they do, they can, they can just stay. I, I do think it's getting better. I think people are wanting to be um, more active and more engaged. And I think that's because more of them are staying longer. They're yeah, not just here right. for a two-year stamp my so passport what, for two what's years your theory? and out. Um, well, I think the Philippines, Manila, is becoming more accessible um, mm-hmm. because uh, I try and do a lot of work. <laughs> I try and go out and find these things. And I think more people are doing that. Was, mm-hmm. I, again, I think social media is very helpful right. because people mm-hmm. can find restaurants, stores. Like I have this other hashtag, Manila has everything. <laughs> and that's the other thing is I want to show them you can get everything here locally right. you can and so I think it's mm-hmm. becoming more accessible from social media mm-hmm. um, I think global um, relationships are becoming more important for people right. and things yeah. like that and so they're desiring and I think the Philippines as a whole is doing a good job representing itself um, in the like for me just for me when we first moved here in 2009 to now 
I, I don't ever remember. I like crafting and creating, mm-hmm. and I don't remember in 2009 stores. Mm-hmm. Stores. Yeah. That's yes. True. Workshops. You have to go to the store. Exactly. Yeah. At the or Nash. Uh, everything was National, national. Book. <laughs> yeah. I need screen printing materials. National Book. I need rubber stamp me. National book. Yeah. I need yeah. tape. National book. They which I love that they do have everything. everything. And now, but now you're seeing their specialty. Yes. The, like specialty Manila stores. has yes. every. I went to a craft book place in San Juan. Have you guys been to this Lasting Impressions? Yes. 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 Crazy, yes. right? Yes. You walk in and it's like. Is it like Joanne's? It's like Joanne's. <laughs> <laughs> you get me. You get know. You. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, so Joanne's is like, it's a store in the U.S. And the Joanne's. First- yeah, I, I know. I went <laughs> in the first time just last July, and I could not believe it. Yeah, it is insane the choices they have. Yes, there's no reason for. I'm not into crafting, uh-huh. but when I saw that shop, like, I wanted, wanted to get to. everything. <laughs> so you wanted to. Yeah. Wow. Actually, that's true. We're slowly growing with, um, like, like ev- with everything. Like, we have the specialty yeah. stores and oh. everything you can I find. I think it goes that's hand true. in hand, right? Yeah. So the more foreigners we have. Mm-hmm. The more we try to make it easier for them to live here. But and see what's funny? I mm-hmm. don't even know because I feel like Benoit's love traveling. They love going globally yeah. and then bringing these brands back, back home. home. That's true. And yeah. so like like La Dere, oh my gosh, we live, we have the best macaron in Paris. Here. Yeah. yeah. Here. here. Like we have, and so I find it so. <laughs> we have, uh, we even have the shawarma. Like the, yeah, the, the halal. The halal, yeah. yeah. We have that. I think that Pinoy's are very. And soothe the burger, right? Yeah. Yes. 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 I feel like Pinoy's <laughs> are very um, entrepreneurial. Mm-hmm. And they're yeah. and they're very, because they are so global, they go out and they find a brand that works really well and think, mm-hmm. okay, I'm going to bring that back to yeah. Manila. Yeah. yeah. It's true. And so I think it's a win-win. I think it's very helpful for, right. th- well, for the foreigners. For the foreigners. But also for us. Exa- exactly. So, okay. So you're a mom of three boys. Yes. Was there a fear initially of raising children in a, in a country that you were not from? Because we mother the way we were mothered, right? Mm. And it's hard to do that in a totally different place mm-hmm. where values, cultural mm. values are so different or you may not know about it. Was it hard for you? What Was there trepidation? I super appreciate you asking that question because I don't think anyone has ever asked me that. Mm. Um, and the funny thing is, Maybe it's just because I'm tired. But I don't <laughs> I, I don't remember having those because, and I love this, um, and I'm sorry sometimes, my family, this is all we've known. Mm-hmm. And so for me, this is our home. Oh, my yeah. family, the, we've never lived in the U.S. And right. I was only a mother in the U.S. for about nine months of, uh-huh. or a year. Mm-hmm. And so that yeah. was the only time I had ever been a mother. Oh. So for me, again, Manila is so tender to me because yeah. it's it's taught me to be a mom. The yeah. Yayas, the Ates, the Lolas, the... Mm. So let's contrast that from where you come from because yeah. it's... We're all <laughs> <yeah. laughs> Because I think it, although it's an American experience, but yes. that is an experience that's... Universal. Yes. Even yeah. if you're true. If, yeah. Kahit tagapasi, kahit you, yeah. you live in BGC. Yes. There is a difference if yeah. you're far away from your family. So, what was your childhood like and how is it different from the way you're raising your children? Oh, yeah. I love it. <laughs> so, I feel like for the most part, I had a happy childhood. I had six kids in my family. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I was raised in Northern <laughs> California in Sonoma, in the heart of the wine country. So, um, so four, four kuyas, if you can imagine that. Oh and then gosh. we all went to college together and it was like wow. I could never have a boyfriend uh-huh. until, they all, <laughs> until they all left. And it was, we were, mm. it was super, we were, our family was very athletic and outdoorsy and I had a backyard and a front yard and lived across the creek and went to school um, within walking distance. distance. Yeah. No uniforms. I will say the only hesitation that I did have was education mm. here. Yeah. But that's one of my um, things I try and write about often is to give people a buffet of choices. Manila has very good education mm. options. Especially mm. now. Yeah. Especially now. Now, and there's lots of affordable ones. Like and like I was telling you, I send my children to a little bit of a unique school, but before that, they were in an Ivy International school that mm-hmm. was affordable. Mm-hmm. It wasn't the high paycheck mm-hmm. that most expat companies have to pay. Right. So I, I found uh, I found choices. Now my childhood to my children's, I love 
love, love, love that I get to give my kids something different than what I had. I loved what I had, but what I often like to say is I'm raising my children to be global citizens. Nice. Of yeah. course, primarily mm -hmm. in the home because my husband and I are American. Yeah. The way we are is American. Right. However, everything outside is Filipino. Mm -hmm. They're the only foreigners in their school right now. Mm -hmm. um, their baon, except for my eldest, is predominantly rice uh -huh. and an egg yeah. and an ulam, whatever it <laughs> might be. So my children's education is very different than what I had. They travel 40 minutes to school each way, but it's in the mountains. Before my son was in a three-story building for school, mm -hmm. which is very different than what I had. Um, I didn't live super near to my family growing up, so that one hasn't been too big. Too I, I think I was just used to that, mm -hmm. that I was, and then I moved pretty far away from home when I was 18. So that wasn't a big shift. But um, my kids, every day, they get to learn something new. They yeah. get to try a new food. They get mm -hmm. to learn a new word. They get to see something, something, I mean, I guess none of this is all they've ever known. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm talking that yeah. for me. For, you, yeah. for right. me, that's how it is, how it is. So and they're in a big city. I was not in a big city. Mm. I lived 30 to 40 minutes away from a mall growing up. Oh my so, god. Yeah. Oh my. So yeah, 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 yeah yes. We were in the middle of a yeah. valley. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And then so, here you are in Manila and, here, and there's and just mall. everywhere. I know. And I'm like, and I, I actually I like <laughs> like yeah. love it. Like, okay, <laughs> let's go to SNR Pizza every Friday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like we used to home make it, but it's actually like cheaper just to buy just it. Just to buy it, yeah. yeah. And a lot less to, to clean yeah, up. to clean up and things like that. So, so this is you and your children, right? Yes. And you fully embrace, and because you're the mother and you're always with your kids, yeah. it's easy to make them embrace the culture. Correct. So my my question is, <laughs> your husband. husband, he's gotten a lot better. He's gotten, <laughs> he, he's gotten, he's gotten really. What did I have him eat the other day? He would like wouldn't try something, and I'm like, I, I had something I eat fairly often and finally he was like fine I'll try it and then it ended up being delicious um, but he, I noticed he's <laughs> the best a few years ago to Ate Chanda or Yaya one time I heard he would hear us use this phrase and so one time he said to Chanda joke long and he said it like so American that we all were like ah you're so <laughs> you're so joke long. but he said it so joke long like yeah. so just American that it was so funny but then it might he's he's gotten better my my baby the bunso he knew his body parts in Tagalog before right. he knew them in English wow yeah and then he would say he would walk around and say nanai tatai and my husband looked at me once and was like what's, what's he this? saying and I'm like, <laughs> Dude, you gotta step up. Like you gotta, you gotta. So I don't think he's. What's he saying? Uh, what's he saying? I'm like he's saying your name. Like he's saying that guy. So he's he's definitely gotten better. He's oh, you know what? We had Inasal twice this weekend. That was Inasal. Inasal. Yeah, he was did like, he like it. He did. He, he did. like we went back literally two days in a row. We <laughs> and then we went. And then we went Very again nice. Sunday. Because I think that's so. Uh, common to find that the wives are always trying something new yeah. Yeah. and then bringing it home and pushing it into their husband's yeah. faces like let's try this and most husbands don't like that it's yeah. like you're speaking from experience I know it's like, so <laughs> I'm sorry I feel like <laughs> Del's like learning from Amber so much like just wants to take it you actually, should bring him to in a song then in the, in the, in the, in the, I'm not uh it's more like I'm nagsusumbong do you understand this no. word? nagsusumbong is when you when you tell an authority figure to settle something for you because it's wrong. It's like tattling. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. It's like tattling. No, they have to find for themselves. <laughs> no, no, no. I, oh. I'm like Susan uh, to you. Home, to me. <laughs> because of the American in Keep the, the house. Keep the gets small. Who doesn't want to eat by the sino? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, he yeah. loves that. Thing. And oh, sinigang. Okay. Sinigang, he doesn't like. He doesn't oh, understand sayang. the soup. Yeah. Oh, see, Jake this... loves sinigang. Hippon oh, yeah. sinigang. Oh, but... mm -mm. Hippon, wow. Yeah. Yes. Oh, my it, gosh. I peel his shrimp for him, though. Wow, that's such a that's oh, such a wise thing, 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 thing to do. To do. Oh. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> right? Is well it really? Yes. Like, do your husbands ask you to peel the shrimp? Oh, do you yeah. do it with your hands? He doesn't. Yes. Yes, you do yes. it with your hands. You can yeah. eat with your hands. Nice. I do with my hands. Unless I'm in a restaurant and I look around oh, yeah, and course, see other people right. are doing it. I <laughs> well have to, done. You know, that's yeah. how I like culturally learn to absorb like, okay, are they 
Are they eating with their hands? Are they you- okay? I'll do what the, I'll do what the <laughs> tables around me are doing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, right. it's a nine forty nine. In case you're just joining us, we have Amber, who is a mom abroad on Instagram. In case you want to do some scouting, yeah. Uh, we're talking about the love that she has for the Philippines, despite having no Filipino blood whatsoever. You know, she's embraced a life here with three beautiful boys and her husband. She's been here for. 2009. Nine years Nine now. years. Yeah, nine, nine years. years this year. Very long, yeah. yeah. Can I just uh, send, send you a message from a Filipina who's living in Singapore. Oh, yeah. She's been living there, but she's married to uh, a, a Brit. Yes. I think she's... She, so she says, uh, Popeye, this is your message. I love your guest today. Um, Andrew, her husband, should hear her say saying that there's life outside Makati, BGC, and Boracay. <laughs> and Boracay. <laughs> oh, yes. And Boracay. And Boracay. <laughs> so this is, it, it's funny because the Filipinas who married <laughs> yes. foreigners have a lot of things to ask you. Or, I get it often. Diba? Yes. Mm. My husband. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Yes. Right. And it's funny wow. because we, we, we know each other. And then she just connected that I'm married to her friend's twin. Mm. Yeah, so like, yeah, that's right. You're married to Tyler. I go, yeah. It's not like I can forget. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I saw her, and I'm like, I know you. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, I do know you. But then I'm like, probably everybody else on social media knows you. Yeah. yeah. So we were like, yeah, yeah. I said, oh, we, we did. Met. We looked at yeah. each other like, hey, each other. yeah, yeah. 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 I just love it when that happens. Yeah. Like, I, know I know you. you. But I the good you. thing is, I actually did know her because how to like, I know you, and then you're like, eh, it's just from Instagram. You don't. Really <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know how Instagram is nowadays. Like when you go to an event and Super. you see a person, you're just like, like even if you don't know each other, oh, yeah, you're like, oh. like, 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 like me and Amber, we're yeah. like, yeah, what's we were up? on stage one time for yeah. an event before, but uh-huh. beyond that, it's mostly just been Instagram, yeah, messaging like online. comments yes. on Instagram, and it's still like, yes. I feel like I know you. Yes, yeah. Yeah. I actually like that. Right, I, I do find, yeah, because then you just get to be friends and talk. And yeah, and you skip yeah. the like Hi. the awkward yeah. stage, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, I run That's in great. trouble sometimes because I feel like I know them. Yeah. And then I'm like, hi. And I'm like, oh, no, she doesn't know me. <laughs> I, guess <laughs> no, I guess it's, uh-oh. it depends who, I guess. Yes, it depends. Yeah. Yes, 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 uh, yes. It's 951. <laughs> if you have any questions for Amber, we're opening up the phone line, 6310899. Magic, hello. Hello. Hi, good morning. Who's this? Uh, my name is Isaiah. Hi, hi Isaiah. Isaiah. Welcome to the show. Hey. Thank you. Um. I, I'm very curious and interested with uh, with your guest today. I do want to ask Amber. You a of yeah, questions. go ahead. Yeah, Amber. Yeah, I'm I'm actually from Orange County, and I've called before. Oh yeah, so. that's right. <laughs> yeah, hi. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So 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 it's, it's very curious to to understand you know her perspective on life in the Philippines because um, I, I I have two daughters. They're now turning nine, and and the other one just turned eleven. So. Um, my, my first concern when I'm in the Philippines is the lack of like parks and recreation for the kids to do. Right. You know, like I'm sure Amber, you, you're yes. really familiar with the things that we have here. Yep. It's like you go to the park, you go to the flash park, you you can do pretty much a whole lot of things, you know, without costing you anything, and they're easily accessible. You're right. So um, that, that that's one of the things that when I come to the Philippines for vacation time. It's like I'm, I'm looking for things for my kids to do, and they got nothing. Check so, out my blog. So they end up yeah, ends- I was about to say, I say uh, you have to check out her blog and her Instagram and her stories. I, I you just okay. you just reposted Batanes. I did. Deva. Isn't it beautiful? It's so beautiful. I was telling Del. Yes, it's I know. amazing. Isaiah, thank and, you and so that, much. That's oh, that's what we end up doing. It's like we, yes. we end up traveling to the islands because my kids love the beach. I oh mean, yes. In fact, we were just in in uh, Santorini and. You know, wow. it's, it's the one thing that they really love to do. So, so we end up just going out of town. But I, I kind of want to uh, understand Manila more, um, sure. as, you know, as as, as, as uh, you know, becoming a local kind of like what you're doing. But I, I just couldn't do that with two little kids. I know it is. It's a bit more work. There, things are not as accessible. But if you can plan out geographically where you're going, you can plan out really great, really great trips to fill your day. So one of the things I also love to think about, 
to suggest is museums. Museums in Manila are often overlooked, but we have so, so many great museums. Mm -hmm. And I use those as places for my kids to explore, to walk around, to move their bodies. We have really, really great museums. Um, the other oh. thing, I do understand what you're saying about lack of parks and lack of green. You do have to be a bit more creative. Um, but they're there and if you do check my blog I do I try my hardest to find um, exactly what you're talking about ways to get out with your family and enjoy a day in the metro um, besides yeah. mall besides mauling even though I actually am <laughs> I actually love mauling <laughs> <laughs> so I'm totally okay, like bowling, laser tag, archery, like, and I love the jovial spirit that you feel in the malls here. But if you have super active kids, um, Manila really does have great museums and science centers. And then we have a few great parks and I have written all about those. So an easy one just off the top of my head is markets. If you can go like to Salcedo yes. or oh, Legaspi. Yes. Legaspi, the Washington Sisip Park, they just completely yes. renovated it and they have a beautiful bamboo walk and some great structures and we bring our frisbees there and go. It does take a bit more work and a bit of creativity, but it's there. And if you want, you can use Manila as your time to do the mauling and to go to the museums and appreciate the arts and the science centers and then use your exploring outdoor time to get out of Manila. However, I will say there's very there's a lot of nature reserves within the metro oh, yeah. as well that are like a 40 minute drive yeah. away. Right. See, how amazing is this that we're getting all these tips about Metro Manila <laughs> from somebody from a foreigner, <laughs> right? Yeah. Not uh, Filipino. Change Manila. Your perspective. You know what? I know. I, I hope like the people from the Department of Tourism is listening. I know. Uh, me too. Right? Yeah. No, yeah. because like Aquaman. she would be like a great ambassador Right, right. For like I the love Philippines. When people say that to me. Yes. It's, I've given it myself. I'm a champion of Manila and a goodwill ambassador. Nice. Yes. I yeah. put that on your bio. Yeah, you probably do that more than people who hold the office. I know. <laughs> okay, so yeah. you, know, you know, you know who doesn't explore the Philippines? Diplomats. <laughs> okay, well, that's, well, I'm so sorry to say this. But oh my gosh! There is. I say it. Thank you. Do you remember? Thank there, you. There's, feel free to send me you. your question. Yeah, on Instagram. Yeah, right. But it's true. The the one diplomat I remember who loved the Philippines was uh, Ambassador Kenny. Yes. Uh -huh. Do you remember Ambassador Kenny? A beautiful woman. She would always watch games. She was in our attend. Was she from Australia? Oh, oh no, no, she was the US, US ambassador. She was two ambassadors ago. Yes. Two ambassadors ago. Yes. And she had stayed here for two contracts, mm -hmm. I think. She had been renewed. But she would go out and, you yeah. know, eat Filipino food, attend the games. Really immerse. Like, yeah, really immerse. immerse. There we yes. go. Yeah. yeah, and assimilate and know the the country that she is in. And yes. It, and even then. Ambassadors fall in love with it. So I heard that I, I was able to randomly host an event at the ambassador of... Um, The ambassador of England, like the United I'm Kingdom, yeah. ambassador. the United Kingdom ambassador, mm -hmm. the and British ambassador, the British ambassador. There, Ooh, there we go. <laughs> and he married a Filipina, and he was here for like eight years. Mm. She was from Cebu. He loved it here. The ambassador, her name was Amanda something of Australia, also a huge advocate and supporter of the Philippines. And we're seeing more and more of yeah. those types of diplomats because before it was really just uh, it's just this it's a passing through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as they go through so many countries. I was going to say a part of me doesn't blame them that lifestyle would be quite difficult. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It would be it's a very I feel very fortunate that we get to stay here for an extended time mm -hmm. and really plant roots mm -hmm. instead of having to pick up and yeah. go every few years. That's right. I feel so lucky that it, that it's here for a long amount of time. Do you feel displaced when you go back home? Yes. <laughs> well, so what will happen? Okay, sorry, I'll, I'll just pose I, a what if. Yes. Like, this is a hypothetical. Because yes. Of course, you know, uh, that's the thing yeah. that we may have in common. It's a transient, yes. Our, our husband's jobs take our families, you know? Yes. So what happens if you're husband gets you know yeah an offer to go back to the United States what do you think will happen so I used to tell my husband you know I'm gonna be so depressed <laughs> <laughs> and eventually he had to tell me like I don't know if you realize this but that actually makes me feel sad because it makes me think I'm making your life unhappy oh. and I'm like well, to some degree, you are. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 But it's also it's, true. It's true. So I actually will say, and my my husband loves to, to pull this one on me, because I tell him, it is going to be so hard for me 
to move back. And actually, when you said, what did I fear about like raising my kids here? I didn't fear here. I actually am so nervous about to, to whenever we will have to move back to the U.S., if right. ever, whenever. Like, I don't know what schools will be like. Mm -hmm. I don't know what neighborhood culture is like. I have right. never been a mother there. So that actually, me, the unknown to me it's is so quite scary. scary. Also scary because that's technically my home yeah, country. But now I feel like I don't fit in. Like, yeah. I would tell my husband, okay, if we move back, what, what do I talk about with the yeah. other moms yeah. at the park? Mm -hmm. Like, Kim Kardashian? Like, what do we... Yeah. And he, you know what he said to me? Hey. I know, don't I actually, Kiki. oh no, I love Kiki. <laughs> I, it's my guilty pleasure once a month. I'm know, like, like, on yeah. the, I, I'm on, I know, it's literally my, like once a month I go through and look at all the, like, what's up with the Kardashians? Yeah. Um, so no, I, I, and her interview with Jennifer Lawrence was amazing when right? she feels like, yeah, it was so good. No, it made me love her. Yes, yes, you know exactly what I'm talking. Right. No, no. But I was just like, I don't know, like, I don't know how to fit in. I don't know, like, I actually feel so unsettled and nervous and anxiety about if that time ever happens my husband's like you're just gonna do what, what you, you did, did here yeah. and when he said that I'm like oh you outsmarted me I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're it's, right it's not it's not really about you loving the Philippines it's your skill mm -hmm. in loving where you are I'm right. so glad you said that. Yes, because that's my future dream project. I want to help people love where they live. Yeah. I want to. Wherever I really, that may be. Wherever that may be. And there's a science behind it. It's called place attachment. Oh. It's beautiful. Oh. Yes. It's okay. beautiful. And I feel like, yes, I. Right. that's actually my, my, my dream and my goal is to be able to help people do that. Because I started looking at why did it work so well for me? I will say I credit a lot of it to the culture and the people here. It is not, I, I mean, it's not it just what I... It is a very welcoming culture. Yeah, it, really it is. is. It's unique. Mm. It is so unique. So actually, when people have a hard time here, I have to remind myself to have empathy for them. Empathy. <laughs> because yeah, empathy. Yeah, yeah. sometimes right. I'm like, what is yeah. hard about yeah. it for you? Yeah. You have gap and job and juice <laughs> and like a helper mm. and a nice school and a nice... Like, like, right. It's hard for me. But and it's so I also really your switch. To, yes. It's your switch that it's there in your life. And yep. it's, it's it's a conscious decision to it love is. where you are. I agree. Really I actually mm -hmm. have wow. a, a challenge right now, if you don't mind me. I'm no, doing, I, I started a hashtag about a year ago called Perks of Banas. And I what I wanted to do was to help people find mm -hmm. the perks, the everyday magic. Mm. And so this month. Everyday magic. Everyday magic. Yeah. Yes. Everyday magic. magic. And <laughs> so this time I'm, at, yeah, yes. Yeah. So Getting this model. month yeah. is, a, <laughs> is magic a, magic is a 30 day challenge that every day you try and strive to find something or think about and remember the beauty that we have right here in the Philippines. Right. And so really it's about shifting your perspective yeah. and the way you see it. And I I, I think mm -hmm. Banois do that super well. Mm -hmm. They're a very when you see the cultures who have been. Um, uh, through tragedies, mm -hmm. you know, these areas that have a typhoon hit every time. Yeah. Resilience. Like it is yeah. it is amazing to see the resilience that is that is there. And so I believe it's a perspective. That's right. Hmm. And a choice. See, it's something that people don't usually they're already immediately, ah, oh, I yeah. hate it here. It and then you see yeah. Usher somewhere else. Yeah. And yeah. then you see a perspective like yours mm -hmm. and you're you're now forced to think, wait. Wait, you know, because yeah. okay, sometimes we get we think that it's an automatic thing. I Manila, oh, super, you know? Manila. and we, even Filipinos are very guilty. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because that's some of the most comments I get are right. are of mm. that. Like I moved, I moved back from Singapore, or I moved from Lete or wherever it is, and I'm having a really hard time in Manila. Actually, I'm a Manila advocate. I love Manila. I do. <laughs> you should have an honorary citizenship or right? something. Right? Oh, I wish. Uh -oh, yeah. I wish. Right? Oh my gosh, what if you stayed here a long time? Yes, and I took What if took your the... boys married local oh, we've women? Already, we've already thought about this. I actually thought, I wonder if my children will prefer Filipinas. Like, I wonder because if Because this is where they grew up. Because this Wait, is where yeah, they grew up. Yeah, that's true. Let's, yeah. I, I want to explore that. I want to talk more about that. <laughs> um, it's 10.03. We're bound for a break. But again, if you have any questions for Amber, again, you can check her out on Instagram. Her blog is yes, well. It's, it's at a mom abroad. abroad. Yes. And you guys can also send us a message via um, Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. We got a couple ones that we will 
ask you later. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, <laughs> but very interesting Nervous. ones. Yeah, but again, it's Amber. Um, we have another guest later on, but we're gonna keep her for another few minutes here on the Mother Show on Magic eighty nine point nine. Don't go anywhere. Radio Super Moms, the Mother Show, Magic eighty nine point nine. The show for moms, bye bye mom. The Mother Show on Magic 89.9. It is 10.09. Once again, happy Friday, everybody. Welcome back to The Mother Show. My name is Ricky. Hi, Mandy. Hi, this is Delamar. Oh, okay, hold on. What's your name? I love you. I love, I, love, I, love, I love you too, Olivia. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we're still with our special guest, um, a mom abroad. Hi, Amber. Hello. Amber so, Folkman. Is yes. that how you say it? Yeah, Folkman, Folkman you're okay. good. Um, so it's been a crazy first hour and 10 yes. minutes into the show and yes. you can listen and watch live through www.magic899.fm go ahead if your friends are all around the Philippines please tell them that the mother show is heard nationwide in Cebu it's magic 92.3 in Davao it's magic 89.1 in Bacolod it's magic 106.3 in mm-hmm. Cagayan de Oro it's magic 89.3 and in General Santos it's magic 106.3 yeah oh, and by the way we're also live on Facebook so a lot of people have been asking questions and just saying how much they love okay. you and that how much you love the Philippines they adore you and people have um, we'll, uh, we'll get to the questions later but you said that you were open to your kids marrying Filipinas yes <laughs> yeah I think like all mothers if you have a little boy or a little girl you yeah. still yeah. have to think about who they're gonna marry of course oh, no right? I would actually I, for- I hope they I hope they do. <laughs> I, I like I can't give my babies anything more than plain Caucasian skin. So <laughs> yeah. I give them this life here. So I sometimes I'm like, ah, Kawawa, so boring. <laughs> but I can give them the life here. So it's All okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. Cause I feel like if they're exposed if they're exposed, oh, if they're exposed to Filipinas, uh, uh, they might. Yeah, yes. you never know, right? right? Well, I think that's how they feel comfortable, also, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, because yeah. that's what, like you said, it's yes. the only life they know. Yes, yeah. and funny enough, since my husband's not listening to this, he dated two Filipinas before we got married. Oh. So, no, it was yes, so oh my and not and not even here. We were not in the Philippines. He was not in the Philippines. We went to an international school in Hawaii, and there is a ton of Benoys there. And so he dated, and what I like to cheat. Te- I know, and so I like to tease him fairly often. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right? uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Wow, that is yeah. funny. Yes, that's really, really. Yeah. Funny. So I'm like, you know, you know it. You should be fine. You should be <laughs> eating more food. You should be. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, That's yes. crazy. What a story. So you have three boys. And I as do. you said, one is eight. Yeah, he'll be eight at the end of this month. And then you have a six. Yes, and, and a four. A, and a four. Yeah, Can you within a few months. Can describe the three personalities? Okay, so my kuya is a bit more serious. He actually, he used to be really good at Tagalog. He, mm-hmm. he was so, he would teach me. I would ask him. How do I text Ate Chanda how to ask if the baby's sleeping? And he could tell me, Natatatulog, something like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. remember. But he could tell me. Um, and then he, his uh, Filipino teacher spoke only purely in Filipino. Oh. And so he couldn't, he couldn't keep up. But he's the one that we, any like uh, Filipino songs we know are because of him. Aww. I used to do a dinner conversations with A where I would take videos of yeah. us uh, speaking Tagalog and, thing, and him teaching me. Yeah. It was actually, he was like my tutor. And then as he's gotten older, he's a bit more reserved. Okay. So I respect that, and we don't. I think that's he's the firstborn. I agree. My, yeah, they're my more serious. More serious. Yeah. yeah. So more definitely more serious. Um, and then my next son, Ainako Ozzy. Uh, <laughs> that's that was like that's when I think of Ozzy, that's like the perfect Ainako Sobra Makalet. Makalet. But yeah. now that he's older, it's a bit more under control and now the boon so is more but Ozzy is my true Panoy boy. He's the boy who picks <laughs> out so cute. He's the one who picks out the the, the barong. Mm-hmm. Like he wants to wear it when we go to church on Sunday. <laughs> he, oh, he picks that are you out serious? at our, Yeah. That's so cute. And he he's, he's the only white boy in the Mormon <laughs> church. <laughs> Who's wearing that barong? <laughs> yes. Oh and, my gosh. And he likes to eat Gigi and rice. He taught me how to eat Gigi and Excuse rice. Excuse me, Gigi. That's, yes. That's how we know his, you're local, man. He asks for that for his birthday meal. <laughs> Yes, and I had golongong. And oh, so, oh my gosh. And I, I don't even know what Gigi what? is. What? I have you a don't... video of him, me giving him fish, and him like, uh, <laughs> like so happy that he's getting it. Same. I have a bunch oh, of sorry, videos. Sorry. With we, my, we, yeah. Okay. To to test if yes. you fully assimilated, did you serve this fish with its head and its tail? One hundred percent. And he picks it himself, and then he shows me how he packs it. 
Okay. Yes. Because, wow. Because even the Americans who've lived here and, yeah. and love fish or whatever, yes. they, my husband told me, how can you eat something that, that is staring back at you? I know. We're very, we're a very American culture is very wasteful in terms of food. But also because <laughs> yeah. when you buy your fish, it's filleted. Super. Yeah. It's steak. Yeah. 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 You never face. see the yeah. whole no. animal. In fact, yeah. when I go to the grocery store, I'm like a little bit Kaloa when I'm looking in the U.S. because everything, every breast is perfectly wrapped yes. in plastic. Like, yes. I'm like, give me a market. Give me, like, <laughs> I don't, or just give me SM Hypermarket where I can pick out what I what I want. And there's something that feels so natural so of yeah. seeing there yeah. as opposed to knowing it got shot I up with you're some an impo- You're an imposter. You're not, not, no, I think you yeah, you are not American. You are not American. Uh, They're foreign eye. Foreign, foreign eye. Yeah. 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 Foreign eye. So my, my middle gosh. one is my super Pinoy boy. In fact, my eldest, he said, Mommy, if um, if Oz and Wells are born here, they're Filipino, right? Yeah, even though yeah. technically yeah. they're not. Yeah. But <laughs> Blue passport. They're, yeah, they, they've lived here. They were born here. Mm-hmm. Um, and he said, when, when will they look like a Filipino? <laughs> when, will their, when will their skin turn brown, mommy? I'm like, I know. Inside. Inside. <laughs> so they, so he's my super Pinoy boy. And then Wells also is quite Pinoy. He's the one. Alicadito. Oh, he's so cute. He, yeah. And he was raised, you know, with, you know how you have that one who's like super comfortable around the yayas and yeah, the yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. That's mine. That's my, oh, just yeah. like walks into the carenteria, sits down, whatever. Yesterday he asked, Kuya Uber, can I have your bread? He asked him, like, no, you cannot have his bread. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Kuya Uber. Excuse me. Kuya Uber. 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 I know, which it's not even Uber now. It's Grab, but he still calls everyone and Kuya they Uber. They're so comfortable. So yes. Me. Yes. And they're loving the culture. Well, yeah, it's, it's not all like they, they have anything. It's all, so when people yeah. say, how are they adjusting? I'm like, well, this is all they've known. Yeah. So, it's not an adjustment. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's their life. Their life. Yeah. And so when we go to the to the U.S., I have to like tell them, you can't go on the street here. Car- cars will hit you. The cars, start <laughs> real, cars start really fast here. <laughs> yeah. And so my son's like, in America, drivers are so mean. And I'm like, no, 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 no. They're just, <laughs> you, you, can't, you can't just cross whenever yeah, you yeah, want. Yeah. And there's not, and then, they'll say like well let's just get a grab when we're in the US and I'm like no that you can't my mom lives way out in the boondocks yeah, right yeah, out very on like a farm yeah. and a, yeah I'm like well no they don't even have them where she lives there's not even a mall where she lives oh, so really? yeah so it's and they love water fountains like when we go to the US and the, drink, know, okay, the okay. drinking yeah, fountain yeah, yeah. however I found they are having more and more here now that's they the are. one yes. thing that used to like boggle my kids minds like blow their mind like I can drink this water like I can I can just <laughs> press this and and hand dryers used to also be really in, but now we have like Dyson hand dryers yeah, yeah, yeah. everywhere so yeah, I know I have it okay yeah. I, I love it again if you're just joining us we have Amber uh, Faulkner Folkman. 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 Sorry, F- Folkman. Yeah. Um, on the show, she's a mom abroad on Instagram. If you have any questions that you want to ask her, you can let hello. us know. Magic, hello. Hello. Yes. Hi. Yeah, Matt here. Hi. No. Hi, Matt. Uh, anyway, it, um, a neighbor of mine, they moved in here. They're Germans, actually. Okay. So right across my house. Great. And they brought their two kids, two boys, two and four at the time. That was quite some time ago. Mm-hmm. And they stayed until they were 16 and 14. Yes. Wow. Lucky so they them. quite a long before they went back. But I remember that the two kids could speak Tagalog yeah. like Pinoy. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you weren't looking at them <laughs> and uh, they're talking behind your back, you thought that you would think that they were Filipinos talking. I love yeah. it. That's how my eldest... And then another it... thing, they love Taho. Yes. My child was a Magta Taho for Halloween two years ago. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I had a sorbetero, Magta Taho, and a Kuya security guard. <laughs> Manong. <laughs> you know, you see uh, blue-eyed guys oh yes. talking to the, ano, the Taho guy in Tagalog. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's my wish that my babies can do that. Right now, my eldest son can only have the accent. He, I've had that happen before. Someone came to my house and said, "Oh, I thought that was the neighbor. It's it's your little white boy." Now, my dream though is for them to be able to speak in Tagalog and also me. Oh, pretty soon they will. Don't worry. I hope so. Say. Yeah, especially yeah. if you're around the culture and, uh, so much. Nice, nice to hear. Yeah, good things about our, my country. There's so yeah. much to love. Thank you, 
okay. Matthew. So you. much to love. Thank and you. Hope you enjoy. Of course, Bye-bye. always. Have a you, good day. You know, you it's funny in Dumaguete. Yes. There is a population of German people there. Yeah. Who speak not English but Visayan. Oh, that's awesome. And when they do. You cannot tell if your back is turned. You you couldn't Their tell that they Their accent is that good. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. And it's but it's I also like, like the church you come from. The Mormons are also like that. They can speak. Yes, they can speak uh, Tagalog because mm. that's part. They've of... They've lived for two. Yeah, they've yeah. lived for a number. They of try years to or... assimilate. Yes. Well, mm. they have to. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, it's such a fresh perspective that it you really have brought is. to the show today, and and uh, a friend of mine said, it's "So refreshing." Yeah. To Thank hear you. to hear someone. From a first world country, say something nice about the Philippines. I, genuinely, there's so much because some people say that, but they don't mean it, and and we we're used to it. Yeah. But you even show us <laughs> what's so nice about our country that we may not have yeah. seen before. It's yeah. just a matter of first. I'm seeing everything for the first time, mm-hmm. and right. so for me, that magic is mm-hmm. all still there. So. Thank you so Come much. Thank you so much for Yes, no, coming. thank you. Please plug your social media yes. accounts and where thank they can you. find you and yes. where they can message you. Yes, yes, yes. So on Instagram, my name is a mom abroad, mm-hmm. and it was supposed to be a mama abroad. So there's two M's in mom, a mom <laughs> abroad, uh-huh. <laughs> and my blog is the same: www.amamaabroad.com. Um, I'm not very active on Facebook, so if you'll find me on Instagram and my blog, that would be great. Please join in in my Perks of Panas challenge to help you shift up and see the positive every day. We have it here. It's just a matter of looking at it and looking for it. Yeah, so um, Love I'll, I'll um, set an appointment for Tyler. So yes. You can talk to you. <laughs> yes. And please try That's it. my goal. I'm going to make everyone love it here. I'm going to make everyone love it here. <laughs> you are the ambassador. Yes. So thank you for the time. We thank really you. appreciate thank it. Thank you. I feel so lucky to be here. Thank you. <laughs> it's a 1021. While we catch up with Amber off air, we're going to play you a song. We're going to pause for a break. Get some more of the guests here on The Mother Show on Magic 89.9. Who do you think you're talking to? Moms, I'd like to follow The Mother Show on Magic 89.9. Moms, I'd like to follow The Mother Show on Magic 89.9. It is 1027 on the clock. Uh, you're still on The Mother Show on Magic 89.9. My name is Ricky. I'm Andy. This is Delamar. Yep, Olivia's still here. And now, two shows back, I think that was two shows back, we were talking a lot about uh, road safety. Yeah. Right? And um, you had attended a seminar mm-hmm. and you gave so many great insights. Right. Um, as well as uh, a representative from Ford. Mm-hmm. But today we have the defense driving instructor from uh, Twazen Racing School, Billy Biliano with us. Hi, Billy. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hi, thank Billy. you for having me here. No, thank you for joining us. You know, it's 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 not, it, it's it's never a bad time to talk about road safety. Right. Exactly. right. Especially now since it's raining. Yes. You know, so our special guest will share his expertise about driving in rainy weather. Yes. Um, he, of course, like, like and uh, Ricky said, he is an instructor at Ford's Driving Skills mm-hmm. for Life, or DSFL, program which aims to teach participants the necessary skills about smart and safe driving. Yes. So, right now, kasi parang di ba pag umuulan, all of a sudden, traffic. Super. Right? Automatic. What is that? Automatic. Well, everybody slows down because uh, there's a change of weather. Right. Now, uh, with that, in line with that, uh, there's a lot of things that you need to do mm-hmm. when it starts raining. For example, when it starts raining, you have to turn your wipers on. Yeah. I the... hazard lights on. Sorry. <laughs> Please no. Please no. I have a Please question know. about that, pala. Because yeah. you know when it's really uh, when it's uh, when the rain is just so hard uh-huh. and people do the hazard. Uh-huh. Is that wrong? It's it's wrong because uh, hazard lights are means mainly you're stopped, used. right? Yes, you're you're supposed okay. to stopping on the side of the yeah. road now. Um, if your hazard lights are on, that means the indicator lights on both left and right are, are active. Yeah. So yeah. the person behind you and in front of you wouldn't know if you're turning, turning left, left or right. right. Mm-hmm. Now, basic uh, way of tackling bad weather is very simple. For example, you're driving and it rains very, very hard and it's hard for you to drive. Mm-hmm. Simplest way is signal, all, uh, signal pointing to the right. That means you're going to the shoulder. Once you get to the shoulder, you stop the car then turn your hazard oh, lights on yeah. and wait for 
uh, the rain to visibility. Kinda stop, mm-hmm. clear visibility, yes. and then resume your driving. All right. So Did once and for all, do not turn on your yes. hazard lights when the rain yeah, is hard. Because I yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. Because <gasps> we've seen it. Andy! No, because like a like, Billy? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because it happens, yeah. right? Like when it's like when you barely can see what's in front of you. Yeah. Because I think what you Filipinos yeah. think is, okay, be careful, the hazard. Mm-hmm. So everybody be careful. Yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> like, well, more of that, the yeah. right? And yeah, also, yeah. we see... Other people do it, so we'll do it yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly. what you can see from afar. Well, that's the point. Yeah. Andy has a point. So, mm-hmm. point being is, if it's raining hard, it's so hard to see the car in front of yeah. you, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Especially if you drive a car that has mm-hmm. tints and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Now, the basic way to handle that is very simple. When it starts raining, turn your wipers on. Mm-hmm. Turn your headlights on. Yes, mm-hmm. that's so a must. So, when your headlights mm-hmm. on, the person in front of you would see mm-hmm. the person yeah. in the back. But sometimes the even if it's like... the person in the back can, can see, see your see taillights. Th- Oh, yeah. But sometimes even at night, mm-hmm. that's the worst, like driving and you can barely see anything exactly. because of the rain. That's, I think, when you really have to pull over and exactly. wait for the rain. To <laughs> so that's when you and should wait. do the hazard. <laughs> so and no. wait and decide if you need, if you to, need, if you, need, to, uh, go need to go or stop. Or stop. Yeah. So, okay. So, that's it. Turn your headlights on. Yes. yes. But nowadays, the, parang the cars already do that, no? Yes, most when of the cars on, now have uh, uh, what you call automatic? DRLs. So they oh, are called the okay. daytime running lights. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then most cars nowadays have uh, what we call the automatic switching. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it has a sensor. If uh, it becomes dark, it turns it, it turns on. It turns on. Okay. So most cars also have um, the automatic wiper system, which mm-hmm. is uh, when yes. it starts raining, it starts Right. Turning Even on if the wiper. you don't touch anything, yes. right? Yes. So yes. Galing. They're robots nice. now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Well, what, what else do we have to look out for if it's raining? So basically, when it's raining, you have to look out for puddles. Yes! Puddles. And we have so, a lot of those in Manila. Exactly, because of the potholes and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. So what you need to be careful of is uh, when you're driving, you need to look out for those things because you don't know how deep they are. Yeah. Yes. So it might cause an accident or a tire puncture. Mm-hmm. Or, or hydroplaning. Hydroplaning. Yeah. Now, uh, in line with that, hydroplaning is another thing. So when you are approaching a puddle, you're not supposed to step on the brake and you're not supposed to ease off the gas. Okay, right. okay, again, so again, what, again, again, again. So, when you're approaching a puddle, you're not supposed to step on, on the, the brake. brake. Yes, and, and you're not, not supposed, supposed to let go of the gas. So, what do you do? Just maintain it because the theory there is very simple. When the tire is rotating, yeah. Uh-huh. There's grooves in the tires, right? Yes. Yeah. So the water will go, go through, through it. Yeah. If you step on the brakes, it will stop the tire from uh, spinning. Oh, and you it skid. will hydroplane. Yeah, that's oh. how you so skid. So that causes the skid. So do oh. not step on your brakes, yes. but do not step more on your gas. Yes, don't maintain. step more. Just maintain it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And also, when Mind before blowing. you drive, you're supposed to check your cars, right? Of Nowadays, mm-hmm. it's started to rain again, so mm. always make sure that your tires are uh, have grooves. Mm-hmm. Still oh, have the tread. Right. Because you know they call calbo, right? Yes. Pag, pag calbo yes. 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 <laughs> pag calbo yes. yung tire, it, it means it, it's lost its tread. Yes. Mm. Okay. So basically, if, if your tires are calbo na, you mm. don't have the grooves. If there's no grooves, there's no way for the water to go out. Yeah. And it yeah. just lifts your car. Right. What's the okay. lifespan of like the tire? Well, there's you know? no general idea of the lifespan uh-huh. of the tire. It depends on your usage. Okay. And also where yeah. you drive. And where you yeah. drive. Yeah, oh, that's true. Oh, that makes mm-hmm. sense. That's why you should always check it. Yes. Yeah. Always. It's 1033. If you're just joining us, we have Billy Biliano, who is the defensive driving instructor for Tuazon Racing School. And he's he's teaching us all about road safety, especially when it's raining. Do you have tips for our listeners um, when it comes to driving? Like Andy said, especially at nighttime. Because yeah. that's, you know, extra. I'll give you guys a scenario. For example, uh, we're... We're in Manila, mm-hmm. or we go to the beach. Okay. It's dark. Uh-huh. There's rarely roads that has those lamps. Yes, right? yeah. yes. And there's this oncoming car which uh-huh. puts his bright. Oh my gosh, mm-hmm. I hate that. I, I know. That. So the quick question is, what do you normally do? Bright. I make gun there. Yeah. Exactly, right? No, or like, or like you flicker. Just flicker. <laughs> yeah, you but flicker. The problem is when yeah. you flicker, he just flickers more. Yeah. So the safest way to handle that is very simple. When an when the oncoming car has uh-huh. his high beam up, just flicker once, just to let him know that the There's high beams a... are up. Okay. Uh-oh. Okay. And then ne- the next thing you do is you look down on the road, mm. down on the right side. Yeah. You will see a magical line. It's oh. a white line. It's called a guideline. 
So you don't blind yourself with his light. Yeah. Oh. You travel safely by looking at that line. So people yeah. ask me, so what if the road turns? Then oh. the, the line turns turn. with it. Yeah. So it keeps you safe without blinding you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's the, one of the safe ways in tackling the dark You're uh, talking about roads. the reflective paint on the yes. road. It's either white, white it's normally white, or sometimes those yellow. Or yellow. yellow. Or, yes. or yung mga... Cat's eyes. Yeah, cat's, cat's eyes. Cat's eyes are normally in the middle of the road. Yung right. Yung don't cat's eyes. Yes. <laughs> no, right? Because it's funny that you <laughs> should say that. <laughs> but... That's what I did one time. Uh -huh. I couldn't see, yes. and I just followed the the yeah, white yeah. Yes. Even uh, in strips rain. of paint. When you're driving in rain, visibility is very poor. Mm. So, for example, you're driving at night; it's raining, so there's poor visibility, mm -hmm. and your headlights can only reach so much, so far, yeah. right? Yeah. So you look down on the right, you see the light, and just follow yeah. it. It's gonna keep you safe. See, this is why you should always. Always, yeah. always attend the driving skills for life if you yeah. ever get invited because mm -hmm. these are skills that we can can stop us from getting into accidents. Yes. The bad just knowing. And, and, and everything's basic. For example, uh, things that people tend to forget, owners of cars, mm -hmm. you need to do checkups. For example, uh, we'll do it in a general manner. For example, it's raining or it's dark. Most of the time, the problem are the windows. It's dirty. Mm -hmm. oh, it's yeah. foggy. Mm -hmm. Or it's uh, no, yung, uh, dust, tapas may exactly. grime. Mm -hmm. So make sure that the windows are clean yeah. before you head out. Make sure that when you drive uh, at night or somewhere far, make sure that you have fuel. Mm -hmm. Of course. If right. it's really far, make frequent stops. Make frequent, frequent stops. Yeah. Okay. For example, there's gas stations, you can stop, get something to eat. Ah, refuel. Yeah. Okay, because yeah. you have to remember when you're driving at night, mm -hmm. you're prone to what we call micro sleeps. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, that's so right. these are the things that you kind of zone out yeah. or doze yeah. off. Yeah. Without then, knowing it. Without knowing yeah. it. And when you open your eyes or you get into the, the scenario again, you're practically a hundred meters away from where you were. Yeah. Uh -oh. Which yeah. causes accidents. Oh, well, no, oh, yeah. yeah. So it's 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 Make very the same stops. with holding a cell phone. Yes. So once you look down and yeah. you look up, you're at least 10 meters away already. Oh my gosh. Yeah, gosh. depending on your speed, pa. Depending on speed. Yep. Oh yep. my gosh. Oh my gosh. But Whew. you know what? I've been practicing, uh, like not using my phone. Proud of you, Andy. I know. I, yeah, you. because seriously, because we talked about yeah, road we safety, did, we right? Did, we and did. I, I activated this thing on my phone that once I'm. Um, on my car mm -hmm. or once like my Bluetooth is connected to my car like there's no notifications yep. at all so it's like, yeah it's so like it it makes you feel free sometimes because yeah. it's also a break from you know like social media everything yeah. like it's a disconnect right. also mm -hmm. yeah nice and you just notice a lot more things Ay, yeah may bago pa lang. Ah. May bago pa lang itatayo. <laughs> Bagum billboard. True. So in general, so these are mostly we talked about the the tips you have for mm -hmm. when it's raining. Mm -hmm. But in general, are there any other tips that you can share with drivers that we may have forgotten? Well, yes, or, please. I, I love it when you said back to basics because yeah. I think, to be honest, not a lot of us know the exactly. basics. <laughs> so that's what we do. We bring everything back to basic. For example, before you leave for a trip, going to work, going out of town. Always make sure that you check the car. You yeah. do a 360 uh, check. Mm -hmm. uh, look under, check for fluids. Right. Because different fluids are different colors. Different colors, different um, consistency. Oh, okay, right, right. So with different uh, things like that, it points to different things in your car. Right, okay. that may be problematic. That may be problematic. So at least it's easy for you to um, troubleshoot. Right. Another thing that you uh, normal drivers tend to forget is... Um, how many of you guys check your tire pressure regularly? Mm. I only check it when somebody goes, parang malambot yung left. Talaga, <laughs> okay, sige. <laughs> Alam mo rin ko bakit? Puro drivers yata tayo eh. We have drivers, right? Yeah, but how sure are you that they, they check They do. It, right? That's right. Yeah. Well, normal Filipinos use their matameter and paameter. I love kick the it. matameter. <laughs> they kick it, right? They kick it, right. So, you have to normally check it make the span of the tire longer, longer right. and to make sure that it's properly inflated because uh, for example it's raining if your tires are not properly inflated the canals won't do their job the, yeah the, the, the grooves, tread yeah right, right. Oh, so if you're sense. under inflated it's just flat oh, oh so it might cause an accident for you if it's weather and your tires flat that's uh prone to tire blowouts 
That's so scary. So do you think that every time you gas up, that's yes. when you should have your tires mm -hmm. checked as well? Every time you gas up, or if you can, a small uh, tire pressure gauge is fairly cheap. Mm -hmm. mm. You can have buy one car. and have it in your car and check it. No, I'm guilty because I don't know how to put to air do the car in my... Stuff. No, how to put air in oh, my tires. Because really? it usually, but it's the gas boy who does yeah. it. So you, can always, you never ask, like, how do you do this? Mm. Yeah. And the problem with the tires nowadays, they have thick tire walls. Okay. So the side of the tires are very thick because of the condition of the road of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Now, where am I going at? So for example, uh, your standard tire, um, tire pressure is 30 PSI. Yeah. Even though if you have 15 or 10 PSI, it's still standing. Uh-uh. Right. Mm. So, so you wouldn't know. So you wouldn't know. Matameter mo hindi gagana. No. Uh -huh. It won't work. So ha what or is that we get? <laughs> a tire pressure. <laughs> a tire pressure. <laughs> no, but it's a bleak sheet. No, but like the it's, newer yeah. cars, right? It mm -hmm. can already measure. Some cars, yes. Yeah, they have the, the system really? that has the okay. measurement already. Because I remember like after the mother show last week, I was driving and then like alarm yung tire. Ting! Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh! Oh no, I was so worried because so I was it? driving alone okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I was like, okay, I'm pregnant. How oh, am I going to deal with oh, this? Uh, so I went to the gas station. They put uh, no, they put air yeah. and they said, mom, kaya pa. Because there was like mm -hmm. a nail. There's a long nail. Oh. And I was like, okay, oh, I think no. I can still go. <laughs> yeah. So I did, but I drove so slow. Yeah, you can never it was, it was very dangerous, but at least new cars uh -oh. have that already. Like, at it, least you would, it, it's, it's a reminder. You. Yeah. 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 And nowadays you can buy... um. There are some uh, accessories that you can buy for cars tires. nowadays that you just plug it in the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in, in the, the hole. tire gauge. Uh, in the hole. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, and then it has the Bluetooth reader inside oh, the car. Oh, wow. Nice. Oh, yeah. So at least High you can tech. see what's happening with your tires if uh, yeah. tire pressure is going up or down. Yeah. So, you know, this is really what, <laughs> what you guys do to mm -hmm. inform drivers yeah. of the, or not inform, means mm -hmm. to remind if they yeah. already know. And mm -hmm. thank you to Ford for thank bringing you. us, you know, th these guestings that remind us or for if for some of us, you know, we are taught mm -hmm. the way to do it. Mm -hmm. So, grab it. That's so informative. Driving skills Puddles for, for life. life. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, as a... As, uh, the name goes, that's what we do. And uh, what we remind people is uh, you have to park your phone. Yes, please. Always. Yes. Always We're ending with that again. Park yeah, your phone. park your mm -hmm. phone. And thank you for reminding all of us because sometimes, you know, what, looking at your phone is a time suck. You think you're just gonna look at a notification? No, nope. no. It's like minutes later. Yep, you're yeah. scrolling through Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, 1040. Again, thank you so much to Billy Biliano, defensive driving instructor for Tuazon Racing School, for thank enlightening us. Thank you for uh, being on the show. It is, like I said, 1042. We have another guest on the Mother Show, and she's coming up next. Don't go anywhere. We've got that mommy magic. The Mother Show on Magic 89.9. The show for moms by, by mom. The Mother Show on Magic. 89.9. It is 10.48. Um, so we've had... Huh. Oh, yeah. What a Friday. Amber, we've had Billy. Amber was talking loving the Philippines. Billy was talking about road safety. And you're probably asking yourselves, can the show get any better? You know? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's the answer is outside. Yes. Yeah, the answer, the is, answer yes. is yes. The yes. answer is yes. The show is, is going to get better. Uh, we have another hour and 10 minutes with you guys. By the way, welcome back to The Mother Show. This is Ricky. Hi, Mandy. This is Delamar. And we have a third guest. Yes. All right. So let me intro introduce her. So to everybody, our next guest is the founder and CEO of People Acuity. People it's Acuity. It's a global coaching leadership organization with network in 33 countries. Our guest is a mother of children, married for 34 years, Ooh. and known for her power to easily connect to people and transform mindsets and heal relationships that produce high performance, productivity, and home and work joy. Okay. She strives to lead and live interdependently, whether as a keynote speaker, a coach, a wife, a mother, and a CEO. <laughs> Please welcome wow. to the show, wow. Deanna Murphy. Deanna! I, I am loving that introduction. Hi. Whoever wrote it, it's like, okay, I, I, That's let me. me live up to that one. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, you, okay, I have four grandkids. You probably should know that, too. Four grandkids. Four. Wow. Grandkids. I know, right? Wow. They're my life. Wow. <laughs> totally love them. So, okay, so Dell's introduction, it seems like there's a lot on that plate. Yes. So, True. can you briefly, like, just sum up what it is that you do? I think 
I think if I were to just say in a couple of words, mm -hmm. for me, it is really all about being a healer of souls. Healer of souls. You know, the, the work that we do, there's so much pain going mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. in the in the workforce, in at home, at school. It, yeah. There, if we can help people begin to see themselves and other people differently mm -hmm. and engage differently, it there's healing that starts to happen because okay, we just that's... we just have so many lies that we believe about ourselves and the, yeah. the way we see ourselves and other people, and it creates frustration in our relationships, and mm -hmm. we get these gaps going on in our families, and it starts to break down, and there's just a lot of pain. And I'm really motivated, driven by that space of how do we help people see differently so, so that's it shift up is uh the seminar slash mm -hmm. workshop that i attended last uh wednesday okay um so this is really to be totally honest uh, most of the time this is done for the corporate setting and i think it's amazing because sometimes in families we don't have access yeah. to having workshops to help us in our relationships. We think it's the easiest thing to do, but yeah, yeah, yeah. we encounter yeah. so many problems. So you started off that day with something that really made an impact on me because you talked about how the biggest problem around the world is really disengagement. Yeah. Disengagement. Okay. So what is disengagement and why is it a problem? Well, okay, so let me just speak to the power of disengagement at work. So when you start to see disengagement at work, you start to see teamwork tanks. Okay. Performance, yeah, it's in the toilet. Mm -hmm. uh, when, you, when you've got disengagement going on, relationships have broken down and all, all outcomes really become obliterated, to be frank. And over the course of the last probably two decades, really, there's been a lot of research and a lot of work done. We're at a 17-year low with employee engagement. And the last time I came to the Philippines for a book tour and a bunch of speaking experiences here, one of the things that we did is we did three workshops for families. Mm -hmm. And I probably had three or 400 people that I had a chance to get in front of. And I was looking out into the eyes of family members who are in a whole lot of pain. Mm -hmm. And as I started listening to the patterns that were going on at home, on them describing in different words the same patterns going on with yeah, disengagement work. at work. They're mm. identical. Okay. So it led me to start doing some research to say, okay, if there's disengagement at work, what happens at home? And it was really surprising that academic researchers have actually, they have done that. that. And what I began to recognize was that disengagement at work spills over into the home and then you see disengagement at home, and it usually shows up in one of two ways. One is social withdrawal. Mm -hmm. So parents withdraw, they're, they're in front of the TV, they're in front of their device. Gadgets. There's oh, Yeah, no. there's a way that they're kind of checked out what's going they on. They may be their... together, yeah. but they're not they're together. 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 Yeah. Yeah. No emotional connection. Yeah, oh. It's just not there. Uh -huh. The other thing that is equally sad and perhaps more divisive and destructive is that you see then negative engagement, which would be violence, Fighting. anger, bullying. Mm. Yeah. But what, what frightens me a little bit, one of the patterns that came up trip here that I was quite surprised by, 80% of all Filipino youth, by the time they leave high school, 18 years old, have experienced violence and bullying, and three out of five have had it happen at home. And Three we talk about, out of five happen at home? Yeah, and that's violence, bullying, abuse, including sexual abuse. It's very, very, more than Three I think we know. So, because we, we think of that as happening outside the home, but you're saying yeah. three out of five instances yeah. happen at home. It, it's happening so at home. And, and so there's, if we've got s some frustration and sadness at work, it spills over. And by the way, it also spills the other way. So if things are not right. working well at home, back into work, okay, we, we created a white paper called the X Factor, the missing employment and or missing in factor in employee engagement. And we talk about that actually as the family. That we've done all this work trying to mitigate employee engagement at work and we're missing the thing that is the biggest factor of all. Family. And, and the, uh, the, the other thing that we have to pay attention to is the fact that you're, you're not just going to see negative bi-directional spillover from home to work and work to home. Mm -hmm. Look at what happens with kids at school. Ah, so if disengagement becomes oh the pattern, no. yeah, so if you start to watch and you look at all the statistics and you line up statistics in school statistics and work statistics, they're following a pattern. So 
children start school and their en- engagement level is about 80%. It's pretty mm-hmm. high. Yeah. yeah. By the time they leave, it's 40 or less. And in the in the Philippines, you've got an 84% dropout rate at college. That's disengagement yeah. on steroids, I might add. Mm-hmm. And if you start to go even to some of the other structures in our society, like church and government, you see disengagement's also happening. Right. There. I believe we've got a global crisis going on, and it's not just... A crisis of engagement at work. It's a crisis of engagement at home and school and church and government. And and if we don't teach ourselves how to engage ourselves, we're in trouble. All the literature around employee engagement, by and large, points to leaders and managers being responsible for it. And it's really easy for employees to say, it's not my job. It's my yeah. boss's job. Yeah. Yeah. And so then we, 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 we just take ourselves out of the equation when we're the ones that create it. Right. Employees choose to engage or not. Parents choose to engage or not. And if we don't create a culture of engagement for ourselves, it's really tough to create it with other people. And if we don't create a culture at home of engagement, then what happens is it gets carried over into those other institutions. So if, if this is all just spillover from these different, you know, units, mm-hmm. does that mean that to fix it, you can start at either one? Or I think the factor, if you start to look at the factor that's common to all of them, is the individual. Yeah. Me, you. me, mm-hmm. me, understanding how do I engage myself. Nope. Oh. Because oh. what it to me was because people go through their lives and they're so unhappy, and it's because mm-hmm. they don't connect, mm-hmm. whether that yeah. is at home or at work or in your church or wherever right. it is that you in school mm-hmm. and you, we can see that when the kids are connected or engaged with their yeah. teachers with their school mm-hmm. they're happy they're there yeah. they're really there they're yeah. not just you know going putting on the, the uniform motions. yeah going through the motions and i think that's what because it i'm not coming from the corporate world so when you say engagement i really had to like Mm-hmm. Uh, think about it mm-hmm. and it's when you just go through the motions of things but you're not really seeing you're not really talking to like you're you're just you're floating you're floating yeah. and yeah. you're not really connecting to people i have a theory you want to hear it okay, okay whatever go, it's go worth ahead. yeah <laughs> go ahead i i just think about what it, uh, ignites you or, or makes you more willing to connect or not connect mm-hmm. i think that it, it comes back to something pretty fundamental mm-hmm. Our children, when they're little, are not really questioning whether they're valuable. Okay. They think they're amazing. Yeah. Because we love mm-hmm. them so much. We love them so much. Yeah. And their their capability, their belief about their capability is not really in question when they're little because they're growing. Mm-hmm. Right. And we just have so much belief in their untapped potential. Notice that between 3 and 18, that shifts pretty dramatically. Yeah. So there's a way that we start to make our value negotiable. Mm -hmm. It's equal to whether or not you got good grades. Okay. Not you were the first person picked for the team. Whether or not someone likes you. If you got 100 likes on Facebook, you're more valuable than someone who only got two. I see. Mm -hmm. And we get our performance, our getting things right, having the right ideas, right. having the right answers, all of these begin to get connected to whether or not I'm valuable. Like like your value can go up and down like the stock market. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which isn't true. Like the Black Mirror episode. Where you, <laughs> sorry. Black Mirror. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry, guys. Netflix. No, no, it's Netflix. a show. Sorry. Mm. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it's something about when, when we start to question whether or not we're worthy or worthwhile, yeah. We start to judge that other people will judge us before they have a chance to. Mm. So do you think that when, 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 like you were saying, as kids, our parents believe in us, you know, <laughs> we feel so seen that somewhere along the way of growing up fades and now your focus yeah. is on your grades, on how many yeah. people, and it hurts us? It absolutely hurts us. And it isn't just that you're doing that as a child growing up. You just think about for a parent, right? Mm-hmm. There's a way that parents can equate their own value to the performance of their children. That's right. true. Right? That's true. So yeah. you have the kiddo who's the all-star in school, and you feel like the Great. superstar parent. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Well, what about if your child is struggles in school or has learning disabilities or some other thing? What kind of right. parent are you? That's exactly right. We, we oh. take it kind of personally, right? Yeah. So yeah. then we're, we're, actually, we're actually responding to our children out of our own pain. Right. Mm-hmm. 
I am. I, I would also name <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's something there's something truthful about it. I, I coached little league for a while oh. um, back in the United States, and uh, I'd watch dads get pretty freaked out when their son failed at bat because it was a reflection on them as a dad. Mm. Seven year olds, okay, yeah. like they're and they're yelling at their child. Their child yeah. is crying because Aww. their dad's not happy because they they didn't they failed the ball. Yeah. They failed. I, I think it, it goes to the second thing. So we we forget that our value is unconditional. Mm-hmm. You can't mess it up even if you... I think the second piece that begins to happen is we start to make our capability equal. Here, we have a little formula here that mm-hmm. I think we, have, we believe by mm-hmm. the time we're adults. It is my capability equals my strengths minus weakness, mistakes, and failures. Mm-hmm. And we make weakness, mistakes, and failures bad. Bad if I have them. I'm good if I have strengths. Yeah. So we become ashamed of our weakness, mistakes, and failures. Mm. And we actually don't realize that our capability is our strengths plus our weaknesses, that both are power sources, mm-hmm. both have the ability to help us differently. So when I'm engaging from my strengths, strengths exist for two reasons. Mm-hmm. One, they're, tool, they're part of our toolkit, they're tools, yeah. tools mm-hmm. in our toolkit. We use them. Mm -hmm. We use them to help ourselves. We Mm -hmm. use them to recover from setback and difficulty. Mm -hmm. We uh, then are also able to use them to serve other people and help them to make a difference. However, our weakness tools are useful when you're not afraid of being weak. So it's the fear of weakness, not weakness, that gets you in trouble. Mm -hmm. When you're not afraid of being weak, something happens. You're open. Mm -hmm. You're not afraid to ask for help. You're not afraid to lean in. And, mm. and, Make you're, requests. and you're opening, of course, the door for other people with <laughs> to help you. So it's sort of like a mm. cycle. So think about the, the last time someone reached out to you and invited you to come and help them. How did mm. it feel? Pretty good. Pretty good. Did mm. you go, wow, that person is such an idiot? No. They, no. No, you're going, man, I, I feel like a million bucks. When you own your weakness and you let other people happen, is sense. other people feel yeah. wonderful. So you just give it back. Whatever yeah. you gave out. It creates authentic connection. Mm-hmm. It's also a place yeah. of learning. There. It's a different power source. It's not the same. It's just it's, it's just different. There's where it is. And what if we saw it that way? Like, what if we didn't make it wrong or bad that, that our children mm-hmm. misses and mistakes and failures? And to learn to, to learn. teach them to accept it. Yeah. Because I think one of the things we do as mothers we don't know that we're doing it is to make them feel bad yeah. about feeling their, guilty about mm-hmm. it yeah and it hurts them more but if we shift up into thinking that their weaknesses are up mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. it's a way to connect to people who can be strong mm-hmm. in those things that we are weak in mm-hmm. it brings us together there you go one of the things connection, i connection baby yeah. connection that's what, you were yeah. Yeah. That's connection. what ian forster said only connect <laughs> See? Only connect. And and we're, we're not talking about getting connected on <laughs> We're talking legitimate human to human connection. Eye to eye. Heart to heart. This untapped potential is the other piece of it. And as long as I can hold value as unchangeable, my weaknesses, mistakes, and failures don't reduce my value, mm-hmm. and they don't diminish my capability, then there's something about there's endless untapped potential. Mm-hmm. And you can go into it. We're, we're often afraid of untapped potential on our own because we can't see it. And we're often afraid of what we can't see. And all of a sudden, when you just, you just step in, mm-hmm. in the not knowing, and you play anyway, it just reveals all unities and possibilities. And you begin to see with abundance. And when you see yourself that way, you see everyone that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I that's feel like true. our previous guest, Amber, attended one of these workshops. We did. That's why she was there. Yeah. That's yeah. also why she said towards the end of the interview, she said, shift up. Yeah. Because yeah. it has a way of changing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Perspective. Yeah. I would say that a lot of the things that had been said were not new, mm-hmm. but they were explained in a way that makes sense. That, yeah. you know, sometimes you know things, you're valuable. Yeah, mm-hmm. but are you valuable? Mm-hmm. Like, for me, that session was that, mm-hmm. that we were going back to really thinking <laughs> about these words and how it affects each other. So our show is about the mother show. It's about mothers. And I know that it's more for the corporate setting. But I love when you said that your deal with some of the companies that you do these these coachings for is to have a family side to it. That's right. I, I think I should tell you something. <laughs> I'm the oldest of 10 children. And I have wow. a mother Dang. who loved being a mother. 
Okay. okay. And when I was growing up, the only thing I ever wanted to be was to be a mom. That's mm -hmm. all I wanted. That's it. And this work is really just, it's just the same thing you do as That's right. being a mother. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, you think about what moms do. You see their greatness. You help your children see their greatness. You help them own their potential. You help, yeah. you help them anchor in the mm -hmm. greatness that's inside of them and have the courage to go for it. And so for me, this is just motherhood. It's just, it's motherhood. Mm -hmm. It's that we, mothers are not just those with child. Yeah, that's right. That there are really amazing yeah. women in the world mm -hmm. who never will get to have the gift of giving birth to a child in this yes. life. And there's something about being able to draw out the greatness of other people that yeah. is the essence of motherhood. That is what we do with our children. I uh, know, that's it. Work is that. And I, I think my heart has always been uh, for families and young people mm -hmm. because if our children cannot see themselves differently, mm -hmm. if we can't undo the lies that society is teaching them, then we, we they inherit a world yeah, yeah. Yeah. that is, is real because when disengagement is at the heart of every one of those institutions, there is no joy mm -hmm. and there yeah. is no real connection and we really don't get to the outcomes that we want disengagement yes. so, and it makes more sense that if you are disengaged in your family then you're disengaged at work mm -hmm. your kids are disengaged from their their school mm. and it's very hard to say this but they take their own lives because they're so isolated and lonely that was one of the things that we actually shared was mm -hmm. that it was one of the things that hurt my heart when I came here mm -hmm. it's like for 15 to 29 year olds in the Philippines, suicide is the second yeah. leading cause of death. There were 400,000 youth last year. Yeah. And in the United States, our, our suicide, youth suicide rate has grown by 70% in one decade. Mm. It's like you just have so many kids just giving up and depression, anxiety and mental illness mm -hmm. now is, it's just exploded in the youth and young adult right. population. Mm -hmm. It's, de and depression is the leading cause of this across the globe and why? Why? Disengagement and depression go together. It's that's that feeling right, yeah. of de depletion yeah, and, that's true. and not belonging. So in my mind, uh, the, the work that I do w was never about just shifting corporations. Right. Mm -hmm. it's because a every single person that comes to do an organizations goes back home and they take it that's home. And right. for many of them, it's more powerful at home mm -hmm. because the way that you engage at work, the principles of effective relationship at work and at home, they're the same. The principles about understanding strengths and effective interdependence and purposeful and alignment, they're the same whether it's work or home. So I, I remember your story about um, you had nephews that stayed with you for a while. Mm -hmm. And one, could you tell us that story? Because I think that will resonate with a lot of how not just mothers, but fathers as well, how to approach call like problems. Yeah, it's a good way to, I, I, love, that, I love that you're pointing us there, Del, because I think um, one of the things that's real pervasive in our society, if I could just make a comment, is that we tend to look at what's wrong and try to fix it. Mm -hmm. And when you look at what's wrong, what happens is you immediately create a feeling of depletion. It's, mm -hmm. it's the, the message is not enough. Not en so when you start with what's possible and what's right, it's a different energy. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. It, yeah. it lifts and it engages. And so uh, there, uh, we don't have, we don't, we don't know how to do that sometimes. We haven't always seen it modeled. Because so, the news is like always so depressing. You're always like, oh. What's wrong, what's wrong, yeah. what's wrong? And I think there are a lot of right things and uh, helping to look at what's right and anchoring in that and lifting from that place. And I, I really got to experience this during the time we had uh, two nieces and a nephew okay. that lived with us for a few years. And this young man at the age of 15 had failed school for the prior two years. He was serious alcoholic and mm -hmm. she was mentally ill. And th he was just kind of a troubled kiddo when he mm -hmm. came to us. And um, I don't think he felt like he'd been successful for a long time. In our high school, ninth grade in the United States, that was a four-class system. When he came home with his first quarter B, a C, and a D, okay. and we, he had never really been accustomed to having parents engaged in mm. his life. And so one of the things that in our home that was really important started, I, I had this modeled by my dad, who one of the ways he wanted to make sure that he had time with all 10 children was that he, he had a weekly interview with every <laughs> an interview, right? Yeah. 
and really was it was kind of like I was being coached mm -hmm. as a six-year-old, mm -hmm. you know, all the way through high school when I left home. And I would have one-on-one -on -one time with, with, with all of my children, children and with, with them when they were with us as well. And I sat down with Christopher when he got his first report card that first quarter. He was scared. He was scared. He was scared, you know, because he's, he's pretty sure that we're going to go for what's going on with the D and that C minus wasn't mm -hmm. looking so good. And, uh -huh. and uh, his head is down. His whole body language is beat up. Mm -hmm. And my question, my first question to him was, wow, I, you have two Bs. I am so excited. Tell me about those classes. The pattern was kind of amazing because both the Bs came right when he had a full belly. First thing in the morning, we always made sure that our kids left with a full belly. Uh -huh. And right after lunch, after he'd after eaten well. Lunch, yeah. And so what, what began to happen, C minus and D were the other two classes. And what, what we began to discover as we talked, his belly was full, his mind was more alert, and he would sit closer to the front. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was just more engaged. And then the C minus and the D, he was near the back of the class and he was hungry. He's a teenager, okay? Yeah. yeah. Well, we discovered that he was hypoglycemic. Mm. And so as soon as he would tank, his brain would check out, and he couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't engage. Yeah. So it wasn't that he was failing, mm -hmm. there was the condition. There was something that he needed. Yeah. So I always tell parents, you know, when your children are misbehaving or they're frustrated, one of the best things you can do is say, what do you need? Now, I didn't tell, I asked him, I said, well, Chris, if you're succeeding when you have a full belly and you're sitting near the front of the room, what do you think could help you here and here? Mm. He said, well, I probably could move closer. Hey, that's great. Would you, would you feel like you could ask the teacher about that? Sure, I could do that. Well, what about the food thing? Well, would it be all right if I, and I put up my backpack and I just ate on the brakes? Oh, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah. Well, at the end of that semester, he had straight Bs for the first time since three years. Wow. And his yeah. confidence really grew because he believed more in himself again because by then he had already been believing what we all teach, right? Your performance equals your value. He was performing better and so he felt better about himself. And that's what you were talking about, how to focus on What's the strength. Right. Yeah, and, and, and not just look at where you're weak. Yeah. And feel exactly. and, and as a parent, that is something that yeah. that would help all of us. Because it's it when your kid Really, the first question is, what, what's happening yeah, there? What's what did you do? You? Yeah. What did you not do? Yeah. And I think that was the shift up. You know, it occurs to me, ladies, that it might be kind of neat if I shared with you an acronym that I often use to teach parents about how to recognize strengths in their children. Okay, okay, okay. Because most people don't know how to, they don't That's know how to, part of it is that we, we tend to expect of our children or think that they, they need to be like us. We don't mm -hmm. know how to recognize their unique gifts all the time, mm -hmm. okay? So I teach, I teach parents it's that we need to wisen up to strengths. Wisen is the acronym. Mm -hmm. And the letters, W-I-S-E-N, mm -hmm. all stand for a different one. Better record this, hold yeah. on. I'm <laughs> writing down, I've got, got a notebook. You've got a notebook. Yeah, I've got yeah. a notebook. And there, there are wisen. questions you can actually use when we do our, our two-hour family workshops that are free. We actually have parents interview their children using these questions, and you would not believe what comes out of it. Okay, so are you ready? Okay. The first, the first question you're going to ask, so the first word is actually weakness. Weakness. Uh-huh, and you're going to go, wait a minute. Okay. All right, Deanna, we're talking about strengths here. So why would wisen up to strengths start with weakness? Uh -huh. Well, the question is, when have you ever been told you're too much? When have you ever been told you're too much? When we teach people, strengths and weaknesses are two sides of a coin. Now, the N in the equation, the last letter, mm -hmm. is actually needs. Mm -hmm. Needs. What do you need to be at your best? And I teach people all the time, your strengths do not just inform what you do well and the conditions under which you flourish. Mm -hmm. In other words, your needs. Mm -hmm. Your needs are as unique as your strengths. And mm -hmm. using the strengths finder, which is the, the instrument that I really love, by the way, has 34 different strengths. M most of us are playing to 8 to 10. Mm -hmm. I tell you that the chances that you could find someone with the same 8 to 10 that you have 476 trillion. Oh. Uh-huh, yeah. So this you're still a number. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, so track me for a minute because this means that your children's strengths are not going to be like yours and mm -hmm. yours are not like theirs. That's right. Yeah. You can't expect them to be you That's because they can't be. See, those little make a 
parent take pause. Yeah. And w the next time something happens like that in a situation yeah. at home, yeah. it really helps us. Yeah. When, when a child is being too much of something, so here are some of the too much is just connected to strengths. You okay, talk okay. too much. A strength called communication. Uh -huh. You talk too much. Empathy. You are, you're just like a bleeding heart. You feel too much. Or positivity. You're like all sunshine. You're not, there's no realism going on. Mm -hmm. Or input would be a strength where you just ask a lot of questions. We stop with the questions already. Mm -hmm. And so we get, we get told we're too much, too much, too much, too much, too much. And when a child is being too much of something, the reason they're too much when the need is unmet, then you then you that thing gets flipped into a weakness and you show up as too much. Mm -hmm. So the greatest thing you can do when a child is being too much or they're they're reacting or overacting or they're misbehaving is to just simply ask the question, what is it that you, you need, need right? Do you need? Okay, are you ready for I? Mm -hmm. So in the wise and formula, I is instinct. Okay. What are the things that your children or you do? and you can't help it. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to recognize that strengths do not just get grown through life. Your children are born with them. Mm -hmm. They come with these things wired into their DNA to some degree. And then right. there's also some nurture that influences it. My grandson, Blaine, at four months old, his mother would have him on, on her shoulder mm -hmm. in the shopping line and he's wooing the lady behind him. <laughs> <laughs> he's making Google eyes. He wants her to laugh. He can't help it. Mm -hmm. It's an instinct. Mm -hmm. At this point, he's he's dancing and trying to get the little old ladies over there to laugh at him. Mm -hmm. It's just, he, he just can't help it. It's an instinct. I have a nephew, Hunter. He's four. He gets a bag of Skittles. Most kids get a bag of Skittles and they just shove it in their mouth. Not him. He dumps it out and then he organizes it by color. <laughs> and so, the, and the, 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 the biggest number of Skittles, so if there are, you know, 20 reds, that's the first line. Mm -hmm. And if there are 15 yellows, that's the second so line. He okay, organizes yeah. it by color and by number. Wow. It's an instinct. Right. And when you start to watch your children, they have got instincts. And they can't help themselves. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, they're clues to a strength. And if mm -hmm. you start to get excited by it, yeah. that actually helps them that's see true. it. Yeah. I like how you have to pay attention. Yeah. Yeah. It's a strength and yeah. you might miss it. Mm -hmm. And that's how. And that's also when you're engaged. Yeah. yeah. You have you to need engage. To be, yeah. to, to watch, to be when there. you watch your children and their behavior, it mm -hmm. means you're there. You're full. Yeah. Yeah. And if you take pictures and create artifacts, an artifact museum of their strengths, you begin to reveal back to them and you help them see mm. themselves. Yes. Yeah. And imagine if they knew. And they begin yeah. to recognize how unique this is. Nobody on the planet's going to show up like they do. Mm -hmm. No one. This is the value you were talking about. This is what we're value of each human being yeah. that right. cannot be changed. Right. Whether you fail or you succeed, mm -hmm. it remains the same. Yeah. For me, this is calming because most Filipino families, we are goal oriented. Mm -hmm. You are not a good kid if you don't bring home a diploma. Yes. And it's not enough that you bring home a diploma. You need yes. to be a first honor, second honor. And our value gets attached to that. That's right. But if we shift up into just watching our children mm -hmm. and see where they're good at, their strengths, yeah. Yeah. that in itself is freeing. Well, they're, they're amazing. And that, I think that's the thing that becomes powerful uh, as we start to just appreciate and celebrate their uniqueness. And the strengths, it stands for success patterns. Okay. And it's actually looking for what's working and celebrating that. Now, I probably should do a short little story here because part of the reason I ended up really getting into strengths to begin with is that I like, in your Filipino culture, I think I'm Filipina on the inside because <laughs> mowing around, huh? Yeah, yeah it's I like know. it's so, it is. so true. I, uh, I, I am an achiever and maximizer. Achiever is very goal-driven, maximizer mm -hmm. about perfectionism. Married to an achiever maximizer. Mm -hmm. And we had the gift at a fairly young age. I was 23 years old when the doctors placed this brand new baby in our arms and said, mm -hmm. Mr. Nahat's fine, but then she'll be severely mentally retarded and never mm -hmm. walk. Mm -hmm. okay. wow. And she could have performed to save her soul. And I think early on, the reason I understand the pattern of uh, imposing your value and capability and untapped potential and the, the lies you have about that onto your children is because I was the expert. And value got so attached to her performance and fixing and solving her problem, and she couldn't. She just couldn't. She 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 didn't sit up till she was eight months old. You know, she took her first step at at two. She did learn to walk, by the way, and uh, mm -hmm. she just struggled all the way through school. And it was not until she was a teenager, 
and we were trying to help her get set up for the United States. They worked really hard to help these disabled kids start to get prepared for a job. And their mission was to identify her weaknesses and plug her into a job that would strengthen her weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. She would come home from work every day crying. Every day she'd come home crying. Okay. And I would say, suck it up, honey. Because, uh, you know, when you're a kid, you just have to have the lousy jobs and, uh, and eventually you can maybe have a job that you like, but this is what you just have to do. And I wasn't very compassionate mm -hmm. at all. And I'm a little sad to say that, a little embarrassed to say that. And, and somewhere in there, I ended up going to Gallup and learning about strengths. Mm -hmm. And I remember coming to the next year every single day that she worked the year before, failing, 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 failing. Mm -hmm. And we get to our next meeting and we're trying to plan the next year's work. And I, I said, I have a really wild idea. Mm -hmm. What if we prepared her for work, not by focusing on and trying to fix her weaknesses, but let's identify what she's good at and see if in a placement where she could have success. What are her success patterns? Let's see what they are. So then we're all looking at the ceiling going, okay, what are the success patterns that we could figure out a job for? Well, what we figured out was that she was loving and she was a good conversationalist and uh, she, she was compassionate with people who had challenges. So they decided to put her in a senior home. Okay. They started out as a custodian, which is kind of funny. Uh, because she wasn't really very good at cleaning. She couldn't organize things to save her soul. But as they were watching her in her first two weeks, something kind of remarkable happened. As she was cleaning people's rooms, she fell in love with her. And they would wait. They'd watch for her shift. And the little old ladies would come out with her walker as soon as they knew it was time for her to come. And they'd say, hey, will you come back to my room and play blackjack with me? Aww. And they watched yeah. her doing that for a while and said, I think we have her in the wrong job. Let's let's put her in charge of activities. Yeah. Let's, let's put her on activities. Right. And so they switched her entire role into being an activity coach and she does activities with the old people and she takes them down to the ice cream social and the sing-along or whatever yeah. they're doing and she loved it. And and <laughs> it's so crazy because she worked there the rest of her time when she was in high school and the last meeting, I, it's tender you can tell for me because the last meeting her boss, I fired people because they didn't have the skill set that your daughter has. Mm -hmm. And hey Mandy, if it's okay after high school, we'd love to have you come and work for us. Because we have, when our, when our people, when our older folks, when they pass away, they'd get calls at the nursing home mm. wanting to know who Mandy was. Sometimes she'd, get, she'd show up at the funeral and the children of the parents that she cared for would say, my mom always talked about you Aww. because you made me feel so special. Mm. And that was when I went, wow, I have just had it backwards the whole time. I thought I needed right. to fix everything she wasn't. Right. And instead of celebrating what she was, life, yeah. my career, and I began to go, there is a totally better way to raise our children than trying to fix what's wrong with them. Because when right. you focus on what's right, ironically, her weaknesses, she would just allow other people to help her. And she was able to be totally effective, amazingly effective, actually, as an employee. And she lives independently. She got herself a job. She's doing so great. She's your first one. She's my second. Yeah, Jeez, we have yeah. A, we have a, a son two years older than she is. Because so. I think for for us as mothers, because the, the angle for us is that workshop was something. The question at the end of the day for me was all of the things that I had learned into my life, mm -hmm. like in real terms. That's right. And it really helps us as mothers, as parents to look at that it, that is it seems like so simple yeah and that everybody should have known this right. but to be reminded to look at our children's I think this is supposed to be something that's you know, it's supposed to be basic but I it's know. just there's so many distractions nowadays yeah. and so many things that you think you have to live up to as a parent yep. that yep. you miss all of these human cues yeah. right. that you're supposed to be acting on True. With your it's offspring. True. Kiowa 24, who says it's a great topic. And, you know, he used a bunch of hashtags. One of them is connected, which I think, you know, this, yep. this topic is all yeah. about. Uh, saying as well to Red Sparrow, Kia Ora from Wellington. Very inspiring and uplifting, not just for the moms, but for everybody in general. Yeah. yeah. And that's why, you know, that we should do this for the family as well. Yes. Because, like you said, there's a bilateral spillover if you're not happy at home. Chances are it's going to affect your work and the other way around. Yeah. And at, you just hit the nail on the head. We might never all give birth. 
but we can be all be mothers, right. if not for others, but to ourselves. Just in case you want the other two letters, expectations. Oh, what yes. do I expect We're not of done others? Yet. We're yeah, I want to make sure yeah. you got that, and needs were the last one. What do I expect of others? The expectations I have of other people actually are a reflection of my strengths. I think you should be able to do what comes easy to me. That's right. And then needs would be, what do I need to be wise in uh, weakness, where have you been told you're too much? Instinct, what comes naturally, you can't help yourself. Success patterns, what has come, where has success come easily? Uh, expectations, what do I think others should do? Needs would be, what do I need to be at my best? What refuels me or anchors me? Wise. Ladies, what was W? Weakness. Weakness. And it's where have you been told you're <laughs> too, much. too much? Oh, you're good. You're good <laughs> students. Instinct, what's that about? Instinct what, is what comes yeah. naturally, naturally yeah. good for you. Yes, yeah, and you right. can't, you can't help yourself but you do it. That's the yeah. organizing the Skittles, right? Right. <laughs> Success patterns. What's E? Expect. Expect. What yeah. do you expect from others? Oh, yeah. by the way, we parents are super at that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We really think our children should be like us, and they really are not. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's a little freaky to think that their strengths <laughs> may actually be at the bottom of our heap. Uh -huh. Anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah. Which is why we often have generation gaps, because yeah. we're trying to make them over in our image rather than appreciating yeah. them for who they are. And N and, and was? Needs. What needs. do you need? Listen to you. <laughs> All right, you totally an got exam. it. <laughs> yeah, you you rocked it. Now we do have a book, you know. Uh, we've written a book called Shift Up: okay. Strength Strategies for Optimal Living, and you are going to be so happy to know that it's going to be available here in the Philippines. Oh, nice. We're actually producing it locally, oh. and it will be sold in one of our local bookstores here, which is great That's news. Great. You don't have to get it from Amazon.com. That's great. Yep. They keep track of the progress of this book. Well, the organization is here. So okay. what they've been yep. doing in other countries is now in the Philippines? Yeah, we have partners here. The People Acuity Philippines is run uh, ah, by our local partners, okay. uh, Inaki and Kit Yamas. We adore them. And frankly, in our four, four <laughs> without any okay. hesitation. And, and uh, Kit is one of the finest facilitators I've ever seen. These two run Camp Explore up at Mount Pearl, which is all geared towards youth and uh, it's a perfect fit because yeah. if we can help our young people even if it's just understanding those five things <laughs> is actually my strength, strength. Yeah. yeah actually it is yeah and the thing that I'm frustrated with my friend over there it's what I need it's actually yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually a reflection of my strength and they're not like me and I'm not like them, so I can't make them be like me. It takes off so much pressure. Well, from we're, sitting, we're, like a, we're like a pressure cooker. Yeah. I of know. all these things that we need to be. Need yeah. to be. Need to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you think, about, you think about this. It's like our children, when they're growing up and they're trying so much to try to fit in, they, they'd want to find people who are like, like them. them. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to say, you know. Yeah. 176 trillion. If you don't yeah. find people who are like you, get over it. Yeah. You never will. Yeah. And what are we just, just told our children? Celebrate who you are yeah. and appreciate who others are. And when you appreciate others and you serve them with your gifts, you automatically create connection. And you don't have to wait for people to validate you because. Tell people who are younger th than us who ask for advice. We're like, you know, just be yourself. Just be yourself. But we don't. But we don't yeah. be ourselves. So it's it's easy to say. Yeah, it's easy but hard to, say. to do. Exactly. Yeah. But like after That's today, right. it's like be yourself actually has so much more meaning. Mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> Profound, right? So yeah. are you? So last Wednesday. You had a workshop in Eastwood, and uh, Amber and I had been lucky enough to be invited. Yeah. So it was a whole day affair, and then you, I think you guys are going to have another one tomorrow? Is that right? Yes, we are. Okay. okay. This is strength strategies for optimal performance mm -hmm. for families. families. And really, children to benefit from it, I would say, would you know, we said 10 and over. I really think it's probably more like 14 and over mm -hmm. because... They need to take Strengths Finder 2.0. I actually took that. Yeah, you do. Taking it. Oh, oh this I is, know. I had like, a test. Because kid. I know I'm like, oh, I'm, uh, I have empathy. Empathy? 
<laughs> Amber Amber has woo. She was yeah. on before. When others we, over. <laughs> I was watching her outside the window, and I'm thinking, man, I want some woo. I got I got talent on me. Right. Right. I, I was telling Kit. <laughs> Because I remember wow. Kid was uh, talking about this at the seminar, and she made a, a what do you call that? Um, an acronym for it. So I'm Isra. Yes. So oh, what's I'm yours? Intellection. Oh. Um, strategic. You yeah. uh, Forget the other. And empathy. I forget the other S, but I have it somewhere here. Ooh. And it was like meeting myself for the first time. <laughs> I'm so curious now. I actually I have I it have. because I took it because my all my family took it and they told me to take it as well. So, so what are did you see? I'm actually looking for it. Okay, because my yeah. yeah my husband he said so how is it? And he I said I, I don't have words right now. I'm I'm like a computer that needs to shut down for to reboot <laughs> mm-hmm. because there was so much. That's intellection actually. That's, <laughs> right, that's, right, that's, that's right. That's actually your intellection yeah, strength right. because intellection will want to process and look Every, at. It. Yeah. All the way around. Mm-hmm. And he asked me, like, so what are your strengths? I'm curious now what his strengths are. He's in the mm-hmm. industry, so they do this as well. But he was so excited to see what my takeaway was. And I told him, I just want to do right by our children. Mm-hmm. And you. And myself. But yeah. because I'm a mother, where I feel like I would need this the most is with my kids. It's just turning seven, but, you know. You know, uh, it's interesting. This morning, I I had an opportunity. I I uh, was in a workshop this morning, and one of the things that I love to teach people is that anytime you've got a relationship with someone else, there's 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 actually not just the relationship with the other person. There's the relationship. You can feel if you're if you're built on a solid foundation. If you're if the, your relationship with yourself is built on a solid belief in your own unconditional value, mm-hmm. and truth about your capability which is not having fear of your strengths or your weaknesses mm-hmm. we call it confident vulnerability mm-hmm. and then just being able to to walk when your relationship with yourself is solid your relationship with others is solid yeah. when you start to have frustration in a relationship with someone else do you realize that most of the time mm-hmm. it's actually about your relationship with yourself you've got lies that you're holding about yourself or them and that's actually the evidence right it's manifesting it's manifesting and so a lot of times we want to different and we, we we tell people all the time that's the wrong question that actually it's what you see that drives how you feel what you do and what you get and so if I can come back and go wait a minute I I've got some lies going on and if I can see what the lie is I can replace it with the truth and once Amazing. Yeah, I need to reboot <laughs> excuse, me. excuse me while I <laughs> wow. um, yeah what a takeaway yeah what a takeaway so that's right. So if you're have this think of so... the think of a relationship in your life right now if you're listening to us, think of a relationship in your life that is problematic, not mm-hmm. just struggling. Yeah, or okay. something wrong. Okay. It's time to look at yourself. It is. My favorite place by the way to look there would be to say what are the you should beliefs you have of the other person? Right. You should be. You should beliefs. You should do this. You should do this. Mm. If you do this, then I'll be happy. Which is just another evidence of our disengagement. I'll be happy. If my mother or father did this, I would be happy. The you should belief, that's, that is actually an indication of your strength, not theirs. And one of the truths... Let's put that in, in real terms. Uh-huh. So, so if your child is... Uh, let's give an example. Let's use your empathy. Yeah. Let's, let's just go <laughs> oh like <gosh>. okay? <laughs> so when you have empathy, think about what you're good at. Mm-hmm. What, what's empathy good at? What do you got, ladies? Feeling other people's, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. whatever it is. Feel other people's yeah. pain. You Being in their shoes. Yeah, yeah. You can stand in their shoes really yeah. well. Okay, so now your child who doesn't have empathy, it's their number 34 strength. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're, they're with another sibling. Right. They're acting out in a way that's insensitive. Mm-hmm. What is your you should belief? You should be more sensitive. Yeah. But that's. Yeah, that's what you're good at, not what they're good at. Yeah. Now, I'm not suggesting that it's not important to to, to, to teach or mm-hmm. you know. It's just it's it's an awareness that we we actually uh-huh. some people based on what we're good at. Mm-hmm. That's true. Isn't that amazing? It's like it's so profound. It's based <laughs> yeah. on what we're good at, right. not based on what they're good at. Yeah. And the thing that's interesting is that that your strength can actually. It's almost like if if we're really plugged in when we get connected with other people. Do you know what happens? We borrow from. So your child may not have empathy naturally. However, if you're not judging them and they're not shamed by the experience 
and they begin to understand how to use their own gifts, what will happen is you can ask them questions to help them understand how to think through what other people might be feeling in the same way that you do it. So instead of saying hey, or pulling the child aside yeah. and saying, hey, you should be more sensitive. Right. What would be the, you know, <laughs> what would be? Like, well, now what would you're you do? talking. Because any time we start to tell and instruct what to do. Okay, that is from a paradigm we could do you realize you, do? you create you dependence do? in children. We want to grow our children to be independent. Actually, we want them to be interdependent, not independent. Because mm -hmm. interdependent is where full engagement is. Mm -hmm. At independence, they'll burn out. Yeah. But if you go to hero and expert mode and you always tell your children you create dependence. Right. You're saying that by asking questions, you don't make them dependent, but you instill this curiosity. That's exactly right. So if it were me, and I was watching that, I would, I would, I would, I might be something like this. So let's just pause for a moment. Mm -hmm. What are you noticing right now? That's what I'd uh -huh. ask them. What are you noticing? Oh, <laughs> yeah. It is the. It's my very favorite question. What are you noticing? Right what now? are you noticing right now? And it's actually promoting in that child the opportunity to step back and get aware. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, I'm noticing that there's a little tension going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm noticing that we're fighting right now. Mm -hmm. Feeling right now. What do you think someone else is feeling right now? You start to just, you point them. You're asking questions. Yeah. So what are you doing that is helping to create that? Because remember, it's the see, feel, do, get, you know, results mm -hmm. model. And so if we can help people walk back through it, feelings are the indication that we're... Yeah. So if they can feel and if they can start to notice what's going on, they begin, they, they learn how to self-correct. If you always tell them, they'll never learn how to self-correct. That's right. They That's keep right. waiting. They wait for the boss. They wait for the teacher. They wait for the friends. They wait for someone else. But if you ask them, what are you noticing? What are you feeling right now? Negative feelings become an indicator. That's <laughs> so then we can begin to help them to learn how to, to course right. correct. Uh, we have a one of our my favorite programs that we do is called Strength Strategy Certified Specialist. We actually do it virtually as well as live. We just did a live uh, version, which we had a room full of mothers, by the way. That was quite interesting <laughs> because so, yeah. it actually teaches spot and see and ask questions and lift and engage other, their others around them. And it, it it's actually the first part of our coach certification, but it's it's particularly powerful for parents. You can you can't go to it and ever parent the same way ever again ever. <laughs> Because it, it starts to point you where to look, and it points you towards curious life. Why am I just hearing about this now? Like, where are these <laughs> workshops? Right? Where, this is, this where is, are these workshops? Okay, I'm just going to connect this to what Amber said earlier, mm -hmm. that now in the Philippines, more and more, the things that we see outside that is working for other co countries, mm -hmm. people are bringing in, and that's thanks to Kit. Yeah. Is, uh, they've seen it work. They, they yeah. both, you know, experience a shift up in their way of living that it's now available here, here in yeah. the Philippines. It's local. So, Guys. wow, that was a shift up. Yeah. And for me, it was really, ooh, after that seminar, I, I started to think about it in my life recently. And I, and I realized that you were right. <laughs> what was frustrating me with the situation was that I was expecting my strengths from the other people mm -hmm. and that was and i that's just i just didn't see them almost that's what happens. it's interesting could i name one more thing as long as we're talking about expectations you know we also have we don't just have you should beliefs we also have i should okay i should beliefs i should i should i should right. and our i should beliefs are also connected to our strengths restorative i should be able to fix this i have responsibility i should be able to fix her disability that's where mine was coming from i'm responsible i must do it mm -hmm. and uh and and not being able to do it was one of the greatest gifts ever because it helped me learn how to help her use her own gifts so she could shift her own life up it's a it's it's kind of okay. a powerful thing so when you've got the ironically always coming from your strengths i should or you should it's judgment yeah yeah it's judgment. We, we work really hard when we have, uh, when we bring people together, we talk about uh, three, three agreements mm -hmm. that when you make these agreements with yourself, by the way, and with other create the condition for shifting. Okay. They're absolutely necessary. Okay. We teach people that you can create your own conditions in order to have effectiveness. 
and uh, and in in the creating your own conditions, you really have to be aware of what what is it that you're wanting to bring and what you need, and you've got to be responsible for it. And then here are the three agreements. Number one is a no judgment zone. So I, I teach people that discernment and judgment are different. Mm -hmm. At judgment, I make it good or bad or right or wrong. Okay. Judgment is good or bad or right or wrong. What your your you should you should do that means you're not doing it right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And if I've got an I should belief, it's the nothingness equated with it. Discernment is, hmm, what are you noticing right now? Mm -hmm. It's like being an observer of, your, of yourself and that yes. relationship with yourself or relationship with others. Yeah. A lot of times when I coach, I invite people to just sit up on a balcony and watch what's, what's happening. happening. Yeah. And it's, it's quite powerful. And you become an observer. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, that, that isn't working very well. Mm -hmm. And I, I remind people all the time, part of the way out of the no judgment zone, you know, out of no, it's into no judgment, out of judgment, and into no judgment, is something like, gosh, I don't know how to do this. Mm -hmm. In fact, the fastest way of letting go is I don't know, and then other people really fast. They just don't know. They don't have my strengths. They can't do empathy. They yeah. don't know how to do it. Mm. So I don't know, they don't know really allows you to let go. The second, the second agreement is bring your puzzle piece. We talk about every human being is one piece of a 7.2 billion piece puzzle, mm -hmm. and that puzzle piece growing, and so is every other puzzle piece. Mm -hmm. Part of the problems in our families, so you get married when you're, I don't know, I was in my 20s, so you get married when you're 20, you know, 20 something, and you fit a certain way, mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden it's you're 40 something, and you don't fit the same way, and people will go, oh, we're just not in love anymore, I quit. Yeah, we've outgrown each other. It just means that you about how we learn how to evolve who we are yeah. and we, we learn how to plug and play and mm -hmm. to be able to learn how to stay in relationship with each other where we really value your puzzle piece is different from mine and I'm so grateful that yours is different than mine and I allow you to come and play yeah. with me and it's not your job to meet my needs in relationship it's my, job to meet my own needs. it's my job to be responsible for my own needs so we've got to each bring our own puzzle piece mm -hmm. and own that my strengths exist for two reasons. Mm -hmm. One is tools in my toolkit to help me, and two to help other people. Mm -hmm. And and so I get to have them to bless your life. And I I have weaknesses, so you can bless my life. That's a connection. We, just, we teach people just step into your confident vulnerability, which is the third agreement. Confident vulnerability uh, means I I own and embrace my strengths and my weaknesses and that of other people without any judgment. Mm -mm. In fact, we, we, we teach all the time that really there's a little saying that we teach people. And I know what I'm not, and both are okay. Mm -hmm. Like oh. your strengths exist in one hand, your weaknesses exist in the other. Your weaknesses and mistakes and failures and needs, needs, mm -hmm. by the way, are vulnerable. And there's a way we, we tell people, put your, hold out your right hand as your strengths, hold out your left hand as your strengths, weakness, your, your weaknesses, your, your mistakes, your, your right hand. That your strengths are big enough to hold your weaknesses, uh, and if they're not, then others will. If you let them in, if you're not afraid of your weakness, then you let them in, and there's authentic connection. That's powerful stuff. It's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. when, Brene Brown, researcher in the United States, and she says there is no leadership without vulnerability, and parenting is leadership. Mm -hmm. You know, leading yourself is leadership. There really is, there is no leadership without vulnerability. And I really think that she's talking about confident vulnerability because most people hate vulnerability. Mm -hmm. But if you can pair it with confidence, then you can go to the unknown. You can go toward what you can't do or what you don't know. You can trust as you move into the uncertainty of your untapped potential, which is the final frontier. It's enormous. And the more you step into it, the more that's available, the more possibilities. Mm -hmm. And the more you just become astounded at what's available to you. Right. Especially when you're around. So if you, if you, I can't even keep up with my I pen. Know. Like I'm just, I'm on page five, guys. You know, to start off to understand these big words, uh, try to check out Brene Brown on TED Talks because that was her first to talk about vulnerability, and she did a whole research on that. Up. People were openly vulnerable mm -hmm. are the strongest people and yeah. heal from pain faster than people who are. So just as a background, because there's a lot to take it, yeah, take yeah, in. Yeah, That's yeah, why yeah. I had to reboot. Yeah. So I just want to connect this to what Amber. How? Okay, okay. How? Go ahead. Because that feeling. Culture. If you take what Deanne is talking about now, is that she wasn't telling us to be like her culture. 
Yeah. She wasn't saying Philippines should be like this. Yeah. The Philippines, no, she stopped that and she was seeing. Yeah. And she was naturally curious, yeah. which allowed her to us. That's why there's a great feeling connected yeah. to when she talks because she can see us. Yeah. And we're not defending ourselves, which yeah. normally happens with me and my husband. Okay. Like, you know, because yeah, he's yeah, partly yeah. male. You know, Philippines should be this, this, is, and, and it. I started to compare the feelings that emerge. White versus brown kind of thing happening yeah, in my yeah. home. But then I realized as you're talking and then Amber's, it was that we were seen. And if we can do that, replicate that moment that we see others starts really when we see ourselves right yeah but that's why there was such a good feeling with our inter- interview with with amber was this these are the principles at next time yeah exactly so I, I love you to remember that anytime you should comes out of his mouth right you recognize behind that yeah he's got a his strength need. going on yeah. and he's got an unmet need that's right and it's like i've learned to watch people who are misbehaving with compassion they're hurting yeah. I'll tell you they're, they're They've got lies about themselves mm-hmm. that they're right. holding about value, capability, and potential. And it just, when we, we watch our spouses, our children, and others that we care about from that perspective, right. shoulds, shoulds, we want to get hooked by that. Yeah. And, uh, and yet, what if... It really is. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's a call for compassion. So these seminars that you've been holding uh, for this visit... How many are you doing for the this time around? I'm not sure I could count them. <laughs> <laughs> Is there I'm, another one today, like right after the show? Is there something going on? Tomorrow we have one. That's for the families. Yeah. Are these usually by invites? Yeah. We uh, promote them so if they can. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So. I think you can, get, you can buy tickets, so right? Let, let's yeah. have Kit do this. Come here, Kit. <laughs> you, you can. This is Kit. She she and her husband, Inyaki, along with Janice, right? Yes. Um, She's here. She's here. Yeah. Yeah. She's here. Yeah. yeah. So oh. she's also one of our, part of our Shift Top community, people like you with the Philippines, and she's one of our um, certified specialists. So um, you can follow us. Um, in facebook.com slash peopleacuity.ph peopleacuity.ph or twitter at peopleacuityph and hashtag shift up philippines and hashtag peopleacuity so we can that's where we promote all our workshops so okay. while Deanne is here we're going to maximize <laughs> we're maximizing six days a week no, it's really but yeah. The great thing was on radio she doesn't have to speak so loud yeah, because yeah. the the microphone is and so sensitive. Yeah. It's getting better. So again, you know, the Shift Up book will be available soon in the Philippines. Is that right? Yes. Okay. We'll uh, promote it also in our on your Instagram accounts. Again, if you need to find .ph um, on Twitter, it's at PeopleAcuityPH, and also I think we have some pictures. If you click the hashtag, mm-hmm. hashtag ShiftUpPhilippines and hashtag PeopleAcuity, you will find some of the people who have attended and what their takeaways are, and maybe you'll feel, you know, check it out. If there's something that's calling to you, check out um, hashtag shift up Philippines and hashtag people acuity. Mm-hmm. And, and I try to come back every few months. I mean, it's, is that right? And just this is this is. Yeah, I, I'm Filipino, Filipino on the ma. inside. All I, of our <laughs> guests today are Filipino. Well, I, when we come, I always do a few two-hour free freebies for families, and then we've we've got the full-day workshops that are so rich. And we usually do the live specialist, which is the one that I had shared that I think is so powerful for mamas or looking to understand better how yeah. to more effectively bring that to their children and their husbands. <gasps> that that so. should, that will <laughs> come the next day. <laughs> oh, man. There, yeah, you'll so be glad you did. Yeah. And there's really a need to for, for me to be quiet and just not have anyone talk to me and ask me questions after yeah, that yeah, Wednesday. Yeah. So my husband was calling me, where are you? The, the, the workshop <laughs> ended at 5. You're still... And I needed, <laughs> because my strength is intellectual, yeah. and we were talking about things that... And it was so essential for me, and yeah. I and I now see just you know how mm-hmm. it will trickle down in real life because this is where it matters, yep. and the things that you talk about and teach about are things that can apply in all relationships, whether they be okay. personal, professional, or even with our. Thank you so much. Thank you, yeah. Thank you so much for your time. That's... I love your work. 
Can this I? is so awesome. Yeah. This you get to, do this. to get to spread all this all oh, this no, goodness right? to, to other people. Yeah. We're nationwide. So like the entire yes. Philippines, if you're tuned in, you know, oh, my they goodness, can hear that's right. everything that you're saying. And the best part about it is uh, this, will be, this episode will be uploaded online. So they can keep yeah. on rewatching it. If they know somebody <laughs> who might need whatever you just said, they can just send them the link and... And that's how we get yeah. the goodness across. So that's beautiful. Yeah, and there's just so much love I online. Know, so oh, is that right? Awesome. Yeah, can everybody. We read some of it. Yeah. Can, okay. Can. Somebody. Uh, Rims pattern. <laughs> <laughs> it she was all written down. Yeah. High five, down. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, Ren says topic is so insightful, and then Bea says I'm very knowledgeable. And Michelle. Michelle. Uh, she goes really appreciate your topic today. I'm a mom of two and soon to be three. Um, she's gonna take home all the topics. Michelle, oh, yeah. you rock it. Dang. That's awesome. So j- there's just so much, and everybody just wants to share um, this episode with all their friends because yeah. I I think it's a it's a real eye opener. And imagine yeah. that's just one hour and how many minutes? Yeah. yeah. The workshop is a whole day, mm-hmm. and it's not teaching and exercises. Yeah. That we exercises. Played. Yeah, we played, yeah. and it's funny because when we were playing. Everything that had been said throughout the day appeared in the play, and mm-hmm. it was hilarious. The the pictures I will post later, we were all laughing, okay. and it's like, oh my gosh! So <laughs> if if you are people acuity are doing us here in the Philippines, please check them out. Again, it's at peopleacuity.ph and on Twitter at peopleacuityph. Thank you, Diana. Again, uh, thank you, Kit. You and ladies are awesome. <laughs> thank you, thank you so great. much. Thank you. you so much. And also to Kit and Inyaki right. and to Janice uh, for bringing us together. Thanks, thank Janice. You very much. Thanks, Janice. <laughs> no, we have one more break and then we'll talk to you again. It's more of the Mother Show right here on Magic 89.9. Who do you think you're talking to? Moms, I'd like to follow the Mother Show on Magic 89.9. The show for moms by b- b- moms. The Mother Show on Magic 89.9. There you go. Okay, Olivia, say goodbye. Bye. Say thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to my show. Catch you on the vlog. Say catch you on the vlog. Oh my Hi. God. We already know her strength. We already know her strength. <laughs> we know her strength. We know her strength. <laughs> we know her strength. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay, so it's 12.02. What? What a show. Hey. Yeah. I know, what? right? Olivia? Yeah. You know, this Crazy is... show. <laughs> it's Crazy. serendipitous, right? Can you say serendipitous? <laughs> Try to say it. You can do yeah. it. Say serendipitous. Serendipitous. Yeah! yeah! Because Good we job. didn't really plan the theme of the show. <laughs> no, but we didn't. For some reason, this is one of those moments I love when it seems to align without yeah. you working it. And before we started, we're like, oh my god, is this gonna work? I know, right? <laughs> well, but that <laughs> came out <laughs> even better. Yeah. No. Better than yeah. we ever thought. <laughs> yeah. Better than we ever thought. So you know what? This is gonna be uh this episode is gonna be up on yeah. YouTube. As soon as we have the link, we will link it on our Instagram. <laughs> If I can connect a, an episode that felt like this season two, was Eat that it? jelly? Yeah. 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 There's yeah. so many takeaways that you feel full. Like you just want to, you're bursting out to, to go and try it out yeah. and, and use it in your life and, mm-hmm. and you feel inspired. And you become a better person. You learned today, right? Yeah. That that you already know, but you just had to be reminded about it. It's like a refresher it, course. Yeah, like it needs to be activated. It's already yeah. there. You know these thoughts, but for some reason they're dormant, they're not being yeah, used. Or sometimes it needs to be explained even more. There you go. Thank you so much, all again. Uh, and of course, Ms. Anna, for gracing the show on Thank today. You. Thank you very, very much. And of much. course, to all our listeners from uh, all over, if you're watching oh, on yeah. Twitch, website, you know, if you're listening from anywhere else. Right, listen and watch live through www.magic899.fm. And we are heard nationwide. Go ahead and tell your friends all over the country that we're Magic 899.1. In Bacolod, we are Magic 106.3. In Cagayan de Oro, we are Magic 89.3. And in general, Santos, your magic 106.3. Um, okay. By the way, next week, uh, we have a guest also, right? Yes, we do. We have Rika Paralejo Bonifacio. Yes, oh, we nice. do. Nice. Mama Wong. Yes, yes. 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 
Oh, oh Miss Bo. Yeah. That's what she calls her. Yeah. Miss Bo. So if you've been following Rika on social media, if you have been wanting to ask her any questions, we're inviting you to send those in so that we can you know, mm-hmm. voice them. She'll be you. here to answer your questions Rika. herself. Yeah. 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 Bonifacio. So, wow. Yes. And we are just... It's not even halfway. This is episode four. Is it four, Naba? Is it four, Naba? I think it's four. 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 Yeah. Four. Four. Uh, So there, that was episode four all wrapped up for you. Again, the entire link, the entire episode will be up on Facebook and on YouTube as well. We'll let you know more about the madness. Uh, My name is Ricky. I'm Andy. This is Delamar. And this has been The Mother Show on Magic 89.9. Bye, guys. (laughs) Bye. The show for moms by moms. The Mother Show on Magic 89.9.